This is the Tech Addicts Podcast. This week, an expensive new gaming monitor from Alienware. How long will your hard drive last? Steam Deck gets another teardown. Is it worth buying from the Nintendo eShop? Streaming Android apps to your Chromebook or PC. And there are two new Black Shark phones coming. Hello and welcome to this, the Tech Addicts Podcast. I am Gareth Miles and this is Ted Salmon. Hello, greetings to you all. How are you? It's very, it's very windy here in North Wales, but Eunice has gone allegedly. So this is the the the, the whip in the tail, the sting in the tail. That's the one. Oh, the hang on a minute. I've got the I've got this um, Canon Xus seventy to show you. Well, you can't see it, but it arrived. It arrived. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Do you want me to get mine as well? It's very cute. Um, yeah. it's, I, it's much smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, uh, Twenty quid from somebody on the on the forum, and I shall look forward to having a play with that. We can compare notes with yours. <laughs> um, I've I barely touched it since uh, since I set it out and cleaned it up a wee bit, um, because I have you know uh, twenty cameras beside it and <laughs> 20 the same cameras 20 quid, yeah. on the other side of it so <laughs> you know picking one up in is is favoring others although i did take one of them out with me uh to the to a, a, a mountain walk the other day i took the actually the first one i bought the canon exus 132 mm-hmm. i took it with me and then gave it a bit of a a go, and I noticed that it was uh it was actually quite good um i, I the the pictures that it took were really actually quite comparable to some smartphones and i might try and do something about that in the future um they're they're it it, it was slow though um as i I watched it sort of automatically trying to adjust levels and things like that to to get the most out of the pictures that it was taking it was slow i was pushing the button and you could see that it was dimming down and adjusting and doing all these things uh, and then it was firing off uh, because the amount of light that was coming into it now whether or not that means that it's just old and it's uh it's, it's it's had its day or something like that, but I doubt that. Um, it's just uh, it's just a little bit underpowered for for perhaps what it's supposed to do. But uh, fiddling around with some of the the manual settings and getting getting yeah. the most out of all the the bits and pieces, it it actually took some pretty darn decent pictures. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and and there's loads of options compared to the average phone. You know, mm-hmm. on this on this one, there's there's manual settings as well if you want to. It is all a right old fiddle in the menu to get to them. We're not talking about D- DSLR knobs and dials to change <laughs> things, but um, it, it looks like an awful lot of good fun. And I, I and I'm going to do the same as you. I'm going to compare it with what phones are kicking out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I think I'm going to be doing some videos on that of just uh, sort of how a compact camera compares to. Uh, a, a smartphone camera because you know having a compact camera I'd, I'd already given this some thought whenever I bought all these and I was going to do a, a series of videos and I was going to call them uh, reusable disposables ah. because if you know uh, I, I joked with you whenever you bought your Exus 70 um, I bought mine for I think it was two pounds off eBay yeah. plus a pound fifty postage and packaging, mm-hmm. so that's three pounds fifty, which is cheaper than a disposable camera to buy out of I don't know Argos or whatever. Mm-hmm. So if you were to take that with you and accidentally dr- drop it in the sea or something like that, it's no big loss. Yeah, you know, if, if anything, you're just going to lose in the memory card that's inside it. But even at that, it's maybe a, a one gigabyte memory card that probably is worth about tuppence halfpenny yeah. uh, um, off Amazon. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it it could take a good amount of pressure off using your phone. Um, obviously, they're not going to do very well with video, but uh, it just uh, it means that you can take some pictures and not have to just constantly rely on the battery of your phone. The, the usual argument, though, is that are you going to have it with you? 
the best camera is the one you got with you and you need to but that is so incredibly dinky i mean if i had a coat on or a jacket on or something i would if it was in the pocket it, it wouldn't matter it, it, it would be of no consequence but if it was summer and you're already down to shorts and t-shirt and you've got to think about where you're going to put your phone then carrying even a little dinky camera as well is going to be a challenge well i i uh on this is walk up the 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 mountain i took my um panasonic lumix uh bridge camera with me and i put it in the waterproof bag mm -hmm. and it started to rain and we came across this little village that was up in the trees and i thought wow this is really nice but it, it's it's chucking it down i don't want to get my big camera out because of the the chucking downness of the rain yeah. so i and the top i just put in that little cam and i took it out started snapping some pictures and they did rather well and i wasn't worried about it getting wet at all uh, if it if it doesn't work today then no biggie it cost me virtually nothing off yeah. amazon yeah. or uh, ebay yeah yeah, it's, it's an interesting argument. I should be interested to see your results, but that's certainly one of the reasons I got it too, um, as well as having a proper viewfinder. Mind you, the viewfinder is so tiny that you, you'd have to be about three years old to get your eye through to see what the other side. But, um, yeah, it's it's all good fun and it, cheap as chips. Yes, yes, and, and batteries are easy to come by for them because... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, this is us back for another week of uh, of tech talk, and we've already got straight into it. Wow, instead of farting around with all this weather. Well, I'm sure you folks are really impressed. I'm, I'm off track record now. Yeah, but welcome to the sixth minute of the podcast where we've actually talked about some tech. Isn't that amazing? Uh, moving into the feedback and contributions, uh, Ian Barton has written in because uh, he feels that he was shortchanged by the last episode. It was only one hour and 55 minutes long, which is five minutes short of two hours. Just Gross. Uh, he wrote in regarding the VW Beetle, which Ted harked and sung the praises of uh, last week uh, in, in the hark back section. Um, and he thinks uh, the English translation of VW is the car for the people. Yeah, yeah. It's Volkswagen, so uh, the wagon of the people, the car of the people. Yeah. Uh, Ted, uh, you can't say your Beetle was black. Why not? It was a car of colour. Oh, come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> but then black isn't actually a colour, is it? It's a shade, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah, white and black are shades, whereas red and blue and yellow are colours. You can only have seven colours of the rainbow, that's it. They're the only <laughs> colours that exist. <laughs> but we're sharp not doing another colour. No. No, that was like we're adding yellow to uh, red, green and blue. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, I think it was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> yes. But my beetle was just lovely. Anyway, um, we, we did all that last week. True, true, true. Uh, Jeremy Hartham also wrote in about the Net or the Nighthawk M5. Uh, this is a Netgear router, uh, which I, I used to have a Nighthawk. I'm just mm. having a quick look at this because I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, Ted, is this something that you would be using? This is, well, he says that this is pure tech lust on his part because it's so expensive. They're 750 quid, these things. But Blimey. it has to be the ultimate in mobile MiFi hotspots, he says. Super fast 5G, Wi Fi 6, 13 hour battery life, and it's removable. Um, support for external antennas can be used as a router and home office with ability, sorry, at the home or office with the ability for mains power and no battery charging. Um, I think they thought of everything, says Jeremy. Uh, but yeah, 750 quid. He spotted one on EE the other day on a, on a, on a uh, pay monthly thing and it was 300 quid up front and £60 a month. <laughs> so yeah this is an expensive option but it um reviews great he says um he says that people uh particularly in kind of central london or new york or whatever say that but the performance is just stunning um they also do a range of 4g and 4g uh plus ones he says um and it's just they're all really expensive but uh, you get what you pay for to some degree because this is the the rolls royce of hotspots he says um performance is stunning and I have I'd read that somewhere else as well about these night hawks. Um, you say you you had one? Uh, yeah, I had an old uh, Netgear night hawk some years ago, and I, I did like it very much. Uh, the the uh, the signal strength from it was 
exceptionally strong, but I've always felt that Netgear liked to price themselves a bit like Apple. They, they want to sort of think of themselves as the Apple of network uh, hardware. And I have the, the Netgear Orbi system around the house, which is not a cheap system to own. Um, and and I, I don't think their their prices are quite justified for for the level of hardware that they give you. Yes, certainly this uh, this must do quite well. Three hundred pounds up front with sixty pounds a, mo- a month. I do wonder how much data you get with that, but uh, hopefully it's sort of unlimited, and you would uh, just be able to 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 push it. That makes it far more uh, purchasable by the the consumer. But still, sixty quid a month is an awful lot for home broadband. Yeah, sounds fantastic though. Um, I think he's quite right, and no good for me with the five G. I don't get five G, nor do you. Uh, no, I don't. No, which is a bit of a shame. I'm just having a look at my five G phone there, and nothing. Although I do have a missed call from this. Oh, Not a sausage. Uh, Bugger yeah. all. Well, uh, on on more fun news, um, Ian Barton has written in about Prowler. Uh, this is Prowler, P R O W L A R. R, which is built on the RR network uh, thing that I don't fully understand. Um, since we got Starlink, this excellent and uh, with its excellent download speeds, it seemed a shame to waste it on just watching YouTube. Recently, I built a new server using Unraid, which supports using Docker containers. Ted, are you with me? I'm, I'm keeping up at the back just about so far. Fair enough. Uh, Docker is a system of creating containers that are completely isolated from the main operating system, but can be or, or, but can communicate with other Docker containers and the underlying operating system. No, you've lost me now. <laughs> I've gone. Uh, yeah. It's, um, oh, well, yeah, he goes into more detail. Uh, they are very easy to install and uninstall without leaving bits of them in the underlying operating system. You know the way you've installed drivers in the past and you just can't get rid of them eventually? Yeah. You know, the, and the, there's there's traces of them here, there, and everywhere, yeah, and they can yeah. cause system errors. Uh, Docker kind of prevents that, and it's, it's, it's something of a sort of a Linux-y type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, I now use Prowler for downloading films, TV programs, etc. to my server, and Prowler is integrated into a system that makes it all very easy to search various Zorans and other download files. Uh, obviously, downloading legal content, of course, or that grey area of, of movies that you already own, looking for uh, maybe a better DVD rip of the DVD that you've already ripped. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Say no more. Absolutely. Uh, you could use it to... <laughs> Damn it, Ian! <laughs> um, get, get pirate movies like Pirates of the Caribbean, um, and pirates starring Walter Matthau, uh, Captain Blood with Al Flynn, <laughs> and TV. Uh, but you can eliminate the time-consuming task of ripping your DVD collection with Handbrake, which you've already done, and you've just been uh, underwhelmed by the the output of it because <clears throat> you already own it. Yes, absolutely, and you can ver- uh, you take a picture and send it to the authorities if you need. Yeah. Uh, you can feed your download streams through a VPN, making it almost impossible. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Ian is very, very proud of, of Prowler uh, and, and, and getting it installed and up, updated and running and things like that. And, it's, and uh, he seems to think it makes, uh, makes for a very good way of replacing those rips that you've already taken um the these sorts of uh programs are fantastic uh i i i haven't moved into prior yet i use sonar and radar to to keep the copy that i have of my dvd and blu-ray um as as picture crisp quality as possible um and yeah, it, it replaces them very nicely with something that's that's even better and and you can you can set it in such a way that uh Say, for example, I rip my copy of, there's one there, uh, Don't Go Into the House, which is a very classy uh, video nasty. If I rip that, I might be able to rip it down to the Blu-ray of it, down to about 20 gigs, you know, at maximum picture quality and things like that, which takes up an awful lot of space. But then you can add it into sonar and radar, and then they will go, aha, we found this version that someone else has done using a different codec. And they've managed to squish it down to six gigabytes. And then you can get even lesser as well if you're prepared to 
uh, deal with lesser quality. So you can you can really control what you have and uh, and and help optimize your space on your hard disks. Right. Hopefully, I covered that up quite well, didn't I, Dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Ian does say at the end there, you can always buy the DVD from somewhere like Music Magpie to keep yourself legal. And that's the good point he makes, of course, which you were trying to as well. Yes, yes. It, 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 uh, it's a very grey area as to whether or not you yeah, can yeah. rip it and things like that. But uh, And it works with Plex, he says. It does. It What's, does. Uh, and MB. What's MB? MB is another media thing, a bit like Plex. Okay. Um, and there's uh, Cody as well as another... Uh, favorable one with the masses um yeah it, 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 we're, we're doing well with with all these uh uh video solutions and streaming uh, systems inside the house and it, it's getting easier and easier for people to do that yeah. um and it, it it is actually kind of annoying if uh, my, the the copy of uh no time to die that i got on 4k uh ultra hd here in the uk for those american listeners Ours doesn't come with a digi digital copy. We have to go and buy it separately. Yeah. Uh, whereas in America, uh, it's a triple play one where you get the, the 4K, the Blu-ray, and uh, a digital copy. And it's a bit annoying that uh, the UK doesn't actually have that available to them. It does in some, but uh, but not as often as you'd like it. And it doesn't seem to be as, as popular now as it was a couple of years ago. I've been into Poundland where I've seen some Blu-rays on sale for a pound or two pounds. I've grabbed those. I the Jurassic World I got recently for two quid out of Poundland and brought it home. And it was actually it says on it that it's pre-owned. And I opened it up and there was the ultraviolet that expired maybe two years ago. And I stuck it in and it actually worked. And I was able to redeem it to my Google Play movies, which was a really nice thing. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, it, it doesn't happen all that often. And I think it happens more in the States than ho over here in the UK, which is a bit of a crappy thing. So we have to resort to this kind of thing in order to be able to preserve our movies the way we want it. I installed um, Amazon Music, the app, um, the other day or the other week. Mm -hmm. And I completely forgotten, you know, that my Amazon Music is stacked full of all the downloads that they... When I bought a, an LP record or a CD in the past or whatever, yeah. they just stick it in there, and, and it's all there for you to, um, you know, you to download and just own. I, I'd, I'd completely forgotten about that. It's That's tons right. of it. I know. I, I went through a phase where I was buying people CDs for their birthdays and Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was able to get the MV3s <laughs> and give them the CD. Yeah. So well, that, 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 that's, that cuts down on the amount of piracy that's out there. If if they do that, yeah. if they do the right thing, and but then you know it, it's it's harder over here in the UK because we've got different laws and stuff like that. And I think that maybe the the bigger companies just or the 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 studios that are putting out DVDs and Blu-rays just go, I can't be bothered about international territories. Let's just focus on domestic, and uh, and that'll be it. They, yeah. If they want it, they can go and buy it themselves. The CADs. Totally. Totally. Right, moving into hardline for the hardware. The first thing we have is a rather expensive screen from Ted. Uh, this is Alienware's upcoming 34-inch QD, which is Quantum Dot OLED monitor, uh, and it costs roughly $1,300. Uh, wow. Can I ask Ted, do you get a free computer with that? <laughs> QD OLED achieves greater deep black levels, more vibrant colours, higher brightness, um, etc., etc. It's just a, it's just basically a, a a better version of OLED, isn't it? Um, yeah. uh, you know, next stage on in technology and Alienware stuff, as we know, is expensive to start with. Thirty-four inch curved monitor, which I was why I thought of you. Um, Twenty-four. Because I'm curved. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you like a curved ball. Um, <laughs> the twenty-one. Uh, sorry, twenty-four ten. I, I I did wonder about that, um, uh, and maybe you can comment on that because uh, you know twenty-one nine was the the whole kind of Sony thing. Twenty-four ten. Is it is it that odd ratio because it is curved? Do you think? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're paying attention. Um, <laughs> 175 hertz refresh rate over the display port, or um, 100 if using HDMI. So, yeah, 
nice looking bit of kit i think i do like alienware stuff i wish i could afford it or i wish i could have afforded it when i kind of got set up and all the rest of it it is a bit of a kind of um it used to belong to dell didn't it does it still i think it does yeah, yeah. um yeah um I'm, I'm just having a quick google of the 2410 and i've come up with well there's a couple of bible verses psalm matthew and luke but then there's also 24 season uh 10 um no, uh, I, I think it's just a, a, a new. Uh, yeah. Or uh, they're they're trying to adopt it as a as a default kind of uh, aspect well, you, ratio. You're going to end up with black bars with content, um, but then I I'm sure when you you're do that anywhere. You, well, yeah, you you can't always have the right thing, can you? It, yeah. It's impossible. Um, and if you're using if you're using it for playing games which alienware buyers probably will be then they're going to fill it out to the ages anyway so anyway yeah expensive new monitor 34 inch qd oled qd oled now that's going to be the new thing that people have to look for whenever they're buying one of these now because <laughs> I, I did go to put one in the bargain basement and i went and had a quick look at some of the uh the reviews for it, and it just wasn't good. It was it was huge, curved. Uh, I don't know, forty eight inch um, display that two years ago would have been jaw dropping, but today, you know, it, it's it's barely ten eighty p, and right. the colours don't match up. So it doesn't. It's not really much good for anything. If if you want a game, you're probably not going to get the most out of it. If you want to use it for photos, it, the colour coordination isn't great on it, and things. So you're you end up just standing, it was about 300 quid, and you know, you're just paying that for the size of it, uh, as opposed to the quality of display. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, you Ted, frequently you would feature in the bargain basement the uh, the, the Sony WH-1000s, and there's a new version of them coming that you would be quite excited about. Uh, they have a, a larger battery, faster charging, and crucially, a revised design. That's it. You said it all because no one really knows anything much about this. The the one thousand XM five um, have been passed through FCC for um, registration, and you've just said exactly what anyone knows about them. Um, I, I'm not quite convinced about changing the design. We we can't see what the new design is going to look like. There's no leaked images. Um, there's just this data from FCC. Um, I, I think that, that if they change the design too much, it'll be a mistake. I think they're, they're near perfect as they are. They, they're just gorgeous and made really, really well. And I, it'll be a shame if they change it for the worse. But it's 18 months since the um, XM4s were released. It's, it's been a good while since Sony have pushed out the, the the update um but yeah th- th- i mean there's a couple of drawings in the fcc but nothing really that's going to be um o- o- of note there's uh i don't know there's a product description uh with a with a few uh okay uh, bits and pieces in here that it, it's the frequency of operation or operation and modulation and antenna types and stuff like that but uh, most of it's kind of lost on me. Maybe they're going to maybe they're going to increase the size of the sensor in the left ear, which knows if you take them off or not, because that sometimes um, I catches I catch it out and it doesn't realise I've taken them off um, and put them back on. So if they were to improve that, it, that that's the only thing I can think that you know, how, how you can improve it really. Well, bigger battery always is welcome, but um, yeah, that sensor I suppose is the only thing. How long do you find the current battery lasts for? Thirty hours plus, something like that. I I think that their claims of thirty to forty hours is about right. As always, it depends on how much you. Um, what's significant about the battery is though that I do go. I mean, I, I tend to use my headphones in spells, so I'll spend like mm. two or three days wearing them all the time, and then I'll put them down and um, not use them for two or three weeks. And when I come to use them two or three weeks later, they re- the battery retains whatever charge it was pretty much. It doesn't leak. A battery when they're not they're not being used so the standby kind of ch- uh, charge i suppose is is solid um but yeah i think in con- continual use that kind of level nothing like the um the marshall set i've got here of 80 hours but certainly very very good yeah i've started using headphones more just for watching tv i guess 
Yeah, you, you live on your own, whereas I, I have a, a family around me who complain whenever I'm watching slam bam action movie at 11 o'clock at night and they come yeah. in, oh, can you turn that down just a little bit? <laughs> so um, I've, I've really started to notice how the, the noise cancelling can, can help um, right. when, when watching those sorts of things. It's uh, far more immersive. So I, I would be interested in, in something like this. Uh, but yeah, the, the battery is, is a problem because it can be two weeks before a I maybe watch one again uh, late on at night. Maybe I've got a day off the next day. Um, <laughs> my wife doesn't give off. But it also gives you a good excuse whenever they come in going, I was calling you from the next room. You couldn't hear me. And you're like, I can't hear you. I've got headphones on. Yeah. So uh, it's, a, it's a top tip to any dads out there. It's not just you. It's anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can't hear anything. I'm doing this for you. I'm, I'm wearing these headphones so I can't hear you. I mean, so, so I can disturb you. <laughs> Anyway, let's hope that the um, improvements don't de deprove it. That's the wrong word, isn't it? <laughs> Unprove de it. Degrade it. Disprove it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, there's an article that uh, went out in the Guardian this week about most hard drives have a lifespan of three to five years. Have you checked yours lately? And I suppose it is. It's an important article for people who rely very heavily on spinning hard drives and things like that um, who have crucial data on there and perhaps as you do Ted you are the backup king uh, you back it up to uh, is it three different sources yeah, so three that you, sources uh, you can't lose anything yeah um, cloud storage is obviously the easiest way to do things but it, it does kind of get analyzed say for example uh, mr. Barton and I would be I uh, at backing up our DVDs, <laughs> um, we have to keep them somewhere. If we were to keep them in the cloud, at, at some point, I'm sure Google's going to do a bit of a scan through and go, here, what are all these uh, copyrighted movies doing here? And maybe delete them on you or something like that, just to just to upset you. It's always a fear of mine that that could happen. So uh, you, you have spinning hard drives, and I have in the past suffered what I called the great loss um, where you've lost terabytes of, of movie data and you have to go and re-rip all of your DVDs which can be good because then you get to use uh, newer software to do it and get a, maybe a better quality copy um, but Ted uh, do you have any thoughts about this or you have any concerns? Well I think the, the, the point one of the points of this article is that the difference between using spinning drives and SSDs and what they're saying is that in their opinion, in their research, the SSDs uh, are not only obviously faster in use and um, uh, and more robust, but they're, they're actually longer lasting. Um, but whichever ones you use, what they're saying is like five to ten years, you should be thinking about this. And you're quite right. I've got three levels of backup here, but all of those three levels are on spinning hard drives. And any one of them, I guess, could go. The the one that's in the main computer of mine, my desktop computer, um, was built by uh, Kev in 2014, I think. So that's now eight years old. And that's still the original drive. Now, OK, when I bought it off him, I obviously formatted it and blah, 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 and all the rest of it, um, but not at a kind of deep level. Um, so any, yeah, any one of my three backups could go, which is why I keep three backups. I don't, I used to use cloud services, um, but I just decided that I wanted, didn't want to spend all that money doing that. And I, I thought I'll do it myself, but it could go. It's quite right. Well, it is true. Um, one thing I, I could, well, I've, I've said this before, and I, I do suggest around the time of the likes of Black Friday and stuff, you'll start to notice some of the bigger cloud storage companies doing uh, better deals. Um, I got a, a lifetime deal with P Cloud for two terabytes of online storage, um, which which is, they don't have a I think I think Google Drive has actually gone this way as well. It's off computer storage, so you don't have to have a, a mirrored folder on your on right. your computer. So whenever you drop something into one of the folders, it takes it off your computer and throws it up into the cloud, and it stays up there. I can't remember off the top of my head yeah, right. what that type of cloud storage is called. Uh, I also have one called Polar Backup, where I've got five terabytes, and um, I, I, I've gone through my movie archive and gone right. Well, that one's 
difficult to find again, so I, I, I want to keep that. Or the, I don't have that disc in. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Um, uh, that disc broke <laughs> uh, in in the great storm of 1987. Um, but whenever it comes to drive life, over there where I'm pointing at the other far side of the room, there's a, a shelf that has I think there's about ten hard drives on it. Uh, that I can't bear to get rid of, but they're old hard drives that I've had for years. There's some from maybe a, a hundred gigabytes in size, made by Seagate or Mac Store and those sorts of companies. But there's they're ones that I've t pulled out of older computers that I don't maybe use anymore, and they're all sitting over there. And every now and again, I'll go through it and have a look and see. And recently, I put them into a SATA um, and IDE uh, docking station. And tried to sort of undelete and recover information from them that was used over the years, and I, I, I was quite successful. Um, but they still run fine, and I've I've done some drive analysis on them, and a few of them are saying, whilst they're they're small with 100 gigabytes or 300 gigabytes, they're still 100 percent. They're absolutely perfect. Mm. But these would be maybe 15 to 20 years old. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, mm. actually. Yeah, it, it's I'd say 15 at the most. Um, and I I had used them as main drives in the computer for a number of years, yet they're still running so very well. And I'm thinking that we had a conversation once before with my previous co-host um, about mm -hmm. the technologies that they used in various hard drives. And there's, I think we, we you and I touched on it. Uh, whenever you go over four terabytes, some of the drives use a, a shale thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and that isn't good. <laughs> and I, I should have prepared myself for this beforehand and looked this up again. But uh, you have to look down into the actual makings of the drive. And there, there's um, it's, uh, shale disk uh, platters or something like that. Uh, and they gradually go after a while. And they're a cheaper drive for them to manufacture, and they tend to throw them out in the, the likes of my drives or my books and things like that uh, for backup storage. And they do, they depreciate quite quickly over time. What you need to do is look for the other alternative, which uh, is the better one, and it stays, it's the, the kind of the NAS-based uh, technology that they use, um, and the likes of Google or whatever would use those in their big uh, data centers and stuff like that so that they get maximum amount of uh, lifespan the only thing that uh, they get rid of them eventually is that they could fit in a bigger hard disk and be able to make that more economical for them by having 10 terabytes instead of say maybe two terabytes in that bay so you know if you shop around and you find the right technologies uh, you can get a better hard disk i think what the article here is just for people who are just going on to hot uk deals grabbing themselves an external drive and thinking that's their data safe and it's not really because it has that that shale or whatever it's called uh technology built into the hard disk that that gradually goes after a while mm. yeah but uh yeah do use it's cloud storage worry, to back it? up your yeah uh, it's so easy to get there's places that do small amounts you know you can put all your uh, uh, sensitive files on Google Drive or, or OneDrive or something in their 10 or 20 gigabytes that they give away for free. And if you share them all out over various different cloud storage platforms, um, you have to remember where they are, I suppose. But um, You've got to yeah, also can... upload them. You do, yes. At but the, once they're at uploaded, the moment, they my, my DVD rips at the moment are about two and a half gigabyte, uh, terabytes. So uh -huh. I would have to um, find some way of uploading those um particularly as i'm on cellular up uh, cellular upload and not proper wi-fi it'd be all right for you with your super fast speed and everything but it would take ages for me to do that well it, it, you also, you have to be selective as well uh where things are you know important i i do have some films that i know the dvd's been out of print for a long time um, so I, I would back that up in case I were to go, if, it, if, I, if I, the hard disk was to go down that I'm using, that it's backed up on, mm -hmm. and then I go to put the disk back in the drive to rip it again after that hard disk went, and then the disk doesn't work, and then I've lost that movie entirely. There's yeah. one film uh, called Menno's Mind that I have on, on DVD, and I was horrified to find that I hadn't actually ripped it. I couldn't find it anywhere on my in my uh, uh, movie storage, and the disk... 
I could only rip the first 30 minutes, which is all right because Bruce Campbell appears in the first 30 minutes and then <laughs> doesn't last for the rest of the movie. But, uh, you know, to watch the entire movie again, I, I can't do that because it's it's been damaged at some stage and, and they do, they go after a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so back up your backups. Yeah, which which is what I do. But I suppose when you've got three, then if one goes, you're all right. But if you've only got one backup, then that might be a problem. Uh, But yes, check your drives. Do, do, do. And uh, your main drive as well, if you're using a laptop, um, make sure you check that. SSDs do go as well. Um, I I run... um, uh, health monitors to see how mine are and, and some of my SSDs may only be a couple of years old but they are starting to their their health has dropped from great to good uh, because of the, yeah. the write times and things and it depends on what you're actually doing with it because I believe that if you're if maybe if you're torrenting or something where it's, it's constantly writing and rewriting and things like that, that can actually degrade a, a disk, uh, an SSD quicker Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I, see, I, I, Google yeah. were right. The Chromebook is the way to go. Live in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up until all their disks go over there, they get uh, taken down. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on to OM Digital Solutions. Now, Ted, this is an exciting looking camera that I'm sure you're going to be yeah. uh, waxing lyrical about. Well, yeah, it's a quick one, really, because it's just a new um, Olympus camera. They've taken the um, legacy name of the OM-1, which we all remember and loved from back in the day. In fact, Ian Barton has still got, um, I can't remember his comment now, but I think he said two or three units of that very camera from back in the day in the 1970s. Um, And they've, um, yeah, they've just made it look a bit like the original Um, OM-1. It doesn't really look like it. It looks very, very modern indeed. But they've they've black. It's black, yeah. That's the one thing. The original would have been chrome on the top, certainly. But anyway, um, the Olympus name going across the um, what used to be the uh, the mirror um, housing, but obviously it's not now. Uh, And that's one of the problems I've got with this. Really, this whole modern thing about viewfinders is that they're more and more likely to be. Um, LCD screens and uh, I don't know I, there's nothing quite like an optical viewfinder I think but I, but I get it I'm behind the times this is a lovely looking bit of kit it's, it's, it, it, it supports the four thirds system so all of those four thirds um, lenses should work pretty much um, perfectly with, with this new camera um, and yeah I, there's not much to say about it really it just looks gorgeous and it looks like it's beautifully built um, and it's going to cost uh, available in March and it's going to cost about 2,000 quid um, body only so you know this is a serious bit of kit and Olympus is a good name it, it's good to see that, that some of the big boys anyway are still making cameras and, and still assuming that people will want to buy them even if this particular one is pretty expensive you fancy one i do yeah um i, <laughs> I can't help but watch that uh, that video of it being tested for water damage you know and they're just squirting water at it yeah and uh yeah that that, that kind of looks fun and uh you, you want that because as i mentioned earlier i i took out the, the little cannon um in order to take pictures whenever it was raining yeah uh, because I didn't want my big bridge getting wet or damp at all. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. And you'd need that with almost $3,000 worth of camera. Looks lovely, doesn't it? It does, does. I want one of those, as we might say, in whatever works. Yeah, doesn't necessarily mean that your photography is going to be any good. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> Forget that. How to use it. You don't have, to, don't have to take any pictures. Just have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, walk around the sidelines of a football pitch, and they'll be going, "Hey, this guy's got yeah, this. yeah, <laughs> yeah." All right, uh, two Black Shark phones are coming. Uh, the Black Shark Five and the Black Shark Five Pro are going to be packaged by Xiaomi and and dumped out into uh, gamer phone hands uh, fairly soon. They feature some rather. Nice specifications, I suppose. Uh, the Black, Black Shark 5 is listed with a 3.2 gigahertz CPU, which is very likely going to be the year old 870 chipset. But then the Black Shark Pro should hopefully have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, uh, which is actually re- listed at 3.0 gigahertz CPU. Um, 
So there will be options for 8, 12 and 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage. That's quite uh, an impressive amount of storage. Uh, but then I guess if gamers need it, gamers get it. Uh, there's a 108 megapixel main camera on there, plus a front facing 13 megapixel camera, uh, which is lower than the Black Shark 4's 20 megapixel camera. Uh, but there's a, a 4,650 milliamp hour capacity battery in there on that on that Pro uh, with 128 watts of fast charging. Mm -hmm. that's, that's insane. <laughs> you going to have one of these? I've never had a Black Shark phone. Um, they, they were um, under the, the Xiaomi brand, of course, that just recently, a couple of months ago, they they did a merger or, or a buyout with Tencent. And so I, the branding is nothing to do with Xiaomi, presumably, anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but they, 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 yeah, they look nice. They, they don't look particularly like gaming phones. If you compare that to a ROG phone or something um, similar, um, they, they these look much more like an ordinary phone, but they're focused on gaming and and traditionally the the black sharks as i understand it have not been much cop on the the, the cameras and actually the photograph we're looking at here normally when you've got an, a 108 megapixel main camera it looks bigger but actually these cameras don't look big at all they look you know and maybe that's a marketing thing that that other yeah. manufacturers do they 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 make sure that one of them looks big to make the point look here's a big camera <laughs> um, yeah they they look nicely under Understated on the back of the device, yeah. they're not uh, overpowering. That's the word. Well summarised. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, there's not much um, information really here about them. They're just going to pass through registration again, um, and 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 a bit like the Sony headphones, and we'll see what they come out, what price they are, and all the rest of it. They, when they were under the Xiaomi brand, the, the pricing was always really really good. So you're buying an ROG phone for you know 700, 800 quid, and one of these was like 400, 500 quid um, from the previous generation. So hopefully this um, five will be the same um, yeah. maybe I should get my hands on one one day yeah why not absolutely and, and then you can play Flappy Bird <laughs> yes. serious gaming yeah yeah get your Mario emulator on there <laughs> all right um, I guess this is something of a public service announcement to uh, those who are in the UK who maybe have have broadband and perhaps has have fallen upon hard times or have been suffering hard times for a good amount of time. Um, the likes of people who are claiming, claiming uh, universal, credit. universal credit, yeah. that's the one, um, can uh, benefit from uh, special tariffs that have been imposed on broadband firms uh, to, to give you a bit of a saving on your broadband because broadband is absolutely necessary to all homes in the UK. And I guess it, it really does open up more doors for people who are maybe searching for, for jobs and things like that. One of the luxuries uh, people tend to cancel whenever they're maybe um, suffering financial hardship is getting rid of the likes of mobile phones and, and Sky Television and those sorts of uh, things for streaming um, channels and stuff like that. Uh, and, and their broadband picking a lower deal because they don't need to pay quite as much Um for, for the utility that is broadband. Um, if you check your company that you are currently being provided with, uh, currently six broadband providers, BT, Community Fiber, G Network, uh, Hyper Optic, KCOM, and Virgin are all offering uh, deals between 10 and 20 pounds a month off your, your regular broadband uh, uh, deals. <laughs> hmm. So um, yeah, it, it, it's a bit of a. However, however, oh, however, EE Plusnet Shell Sky Talk Talk and Vodafone do not, and and the, I think what there's Ofcom are saying here is that come on, everyone, you should all be doing this, and that they, they they don't want to put it into law, but. Um, you know that they, they they should be playing ball with this and doing the decent thing, like the other companies are. It's interesting how though I, I thought that EE because BT and EE are on separate lists there. BT are doing it and EE are not, and I thought they were um, much of the same company now. They certainly are with my mum and dad's broadband. They've got BT broadband and EE phones, and it's all part of a bundle. So I'm not quite mm. sure what that's about. Um, but yeah, I think they're trying to say. If people are on universal credit, then they should get this special deal, and I agree. 
Well, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I saw this, I think it was on Daily Mail, maybe, whenever I was in work. It's one of the few papers that I can actually peruse in work. And there was an ad at the side saying, are you taking advantage of your social tariff on your broadband? And I thought, no, no, I'll go and have a look and see what's available on Virgin. And if I was claiming universal credit, uh, I could have got £15 off a month off of my bill, right. which would be really quite welcome. <laughs> But I, I'm not, so uh, because I work, I, I don't yeah. get any kind of things. Although I am expected to use my home broadband that I pay for to my wallet for my work, which is a bit frustrating. I know there's there's tax incentives there which give you something like six pounds a month uh, toward using heat and electricity for work purposes in the home. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, I think it's more designed people who are not in work will be able to open up a few more doors for them uh, be able to complete online application forms they'll be able to maybe even do some work from home uh, whilst whilst receiving a, a bit of a benefit and they're quoting someone in this BBC article that says I've never heard of any of this and this is someone who is quite switched on who tends to watch the news and all the rest of it and i would say the same i also have never heard of any of this so yeah. you know they're, they're obviously not pushing this out and making it publicly um available knowledge uh, you just happen to stumble on it in a paper at work fair enough but um yeah let's get off com pushing it out there yeah yeah it's important for anyone who's on universal credit because obviously they've lost that little bit extra uh, and the, the rising price of, of bills the first thing they're going to do is go well, um, it's, you know, they're talking about eat or heat. Uh, broadband's going to go well before eat or heat decisions have to be made. Yeah. Uh, so uh, save where you can. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I was contacted by a little company during the week asking me to review a, a, a product for them, but I can't because I don't have an iPad. Um, and <laughs> whenever I looked into it, um, I actually thought... This looks kind of cool. I do wish I had an iPad to be able to to um, have a play with this because it's it's a full-on case affair. And we have seen these before, but never as small a profile as this. Um, you put your iPad inside it, and it turns it into essentially a laptop. Now, that, that's nothing new. Um, it has a sort of integrated power cable that goes up and round onto the side or the bottom of the iPad because it's in uh, port, uh, uh, landscape. Um, and it, it clicks in and it powers off the battery um, and then you can charge it through the actual keyboard unit itself uh, whenever you're at your destination or working from home or whatever or working at a desk uh, it has a nice inlay for the Apple Pencil and it has a full QWERTY keyboard uh, which which looks like a very uh, spacious uh, backlit what called? backlit cl uh, what are they called? Chicklet, chicklet. style keys yeah. Um, and it, it all looks really quite nice. Um, mm. the, the, the backlit colours vary as well. You can change the colours as you like. And there's a bunch of different ports that you can plug in headphones and, and uh, USBs and things like that uh, to, to make it a bit more of a, a desktop pal or solution. It is $100, but I think, you know, turning an iPad into a, a bit of a, a workhorse, workhorse uh, road warrior... Um, $100 is fine for that. Ted, mm -hmm. would you want one of these yeah. wrapped around your iPad? Yeah, definitely. If I had an iPad, I'm the same as you. I haven't got one. But um, if if someone brought one of these out for my Nokia T20, <laughs> I, I'd be all over it. It looks great. It looks really, really well made. And when you said it was $100, I was actually quite surprised. I thought you were going to say more than that for a, a yeah. backlit keyboard. Uh, presumably it's got its own battery and it, it, it uh, lithium ion and it charges it through the USB-C. So, um, yeah, yeah I, it looks great. I really like that. Get one in, and, even if you haven't HDMI. got an iPad. <laughs> yeah, and, and just force my uh, my Samsung into it. Yeah. <laughs> Take a hammer to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, unfortunately it is iPad only. There's the iPad yeah. Pro 11 inch is the only one they're making at the moment. Right. Oh no, it says there's a 12.9 but I can't seem to be able to add that to the cart. Mm. Uh, but the iPad 11 first, second and third gen uh, is is available to purchase. Um, I, I think it actually looks pretty Cool. I would, I would have this and take it with me yeah, up a blanket yeah. if I was there. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. Cressona. Uh, yeah. No. Cressona. Ch Chessona. Yeah. Oh, so I should have said that at the start. Chessona. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, hang on a minute. There's one for a galaxy here. 
If you look at, the, look at the products, and it says, Ooh. oh, coming soon. So they're, they're making one for a galaxy. Ah, I'll be in touch with them whenever Ooh. that arrives. Yeah. Very yes. good. Nice one. Oh, it does actually do. There's one for the iPad Mini as well. Oh, coming soon. Yeah. Pro coming soon. Nope, Pro's there. That's, yep. Yeah. Uh, I, and, oh, it comes in different colours, too. What have you got? The 7 mm. Plus, haven't you? 7, seven Pro, 7 Plus. 7 Plus. Um, you'd have better hope they're making it for that model, I suppose. I do, unless I go and trade it for the 8. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Steam Deck. Steam Deck. It's been a while since we've talked about the Steam Deck. I think last week we skipped it, um, maybe. Um, there's a iFixit on YouTube. I have done a full teardown uh, of it uh, because Valve have said that they're going to make this repairable which is one of the best things about it and uh, I fix it thought they would go and have a look and see just how repairable it was you can take it apart if you absolutely need to it's not the easiest thing to actually um, work around but it's easier than many of the other things that are available. And they give it a, a 7 out of 10 score. But it's, it's interesting to see how it opens up and uh, and some of the, the decisions they've made with the, the technology. Valve themselves, I vaguely remember, did this previously where they showed you how to replace the SSD that's built into it, I think, in one of their teardowns. And advised that you shouldn't really do this. But... Uh, you know, if you've, if you've bought it and you absolutely have to do it, then it is doable if you're prepared to sit down and and uh, do your homework. So it's a, it's a good push toward this whole right to repair thing, which is a debate that, you know, we, we shouldn't really need to be having. Um, and I, I do remember during the week, actually, I watched a video. I've forgotten your man's name. I suppose I could find it while I'm talking about it. Uh, he had a look at the... Or he was having a, a bit of a dilemma about... Google's uh, thumbprint calibration tool that they released in order to help people with their right to repair or, or making their own repairs and replacing screens. Uh, mm -hmm. And he wasn't, the, the people were having trouble with this tool not actually working on Pixel devices. So Google's own tool uh, doesn't work for you to be able to go and fix your own screen. Uh, if you were to smash your screen on your Pixel device. So, you know, the, the companies are saying, we're making the tools available for you to be able to do it, but then not actually making them compatible with, with the devices that you want to be using them on. Hmm. I can't remember his name, and I can't see the video in my history just at a glance. But you know the fellow I'm talking about. Uh, you do. Uh, Jim, <laughs> Jim something, isn't it? Uh, oh, no, that's Jim will fix it. <laughs> No, yeah, let's not, let's not mention him. No, <laughs> I watched the video of this teardown. It was quite interesting. One of the the things that they were making um, a, a point about was the fact that everything is really well labelled. So when you get inside this thing, there's there's labels and uh, everything. It, it's very clear about what's what because they they print it in English on it. Um, but latterly in the thing, they, they had a right old trouble getting the battery out, which they said the battery was the, the hardest part of the whole thing. It was completely glued in there. If you did um, at some point have to replace the battery, then that would be the hardest job. But they were talking more about the the items that do tend to go, which you were talking about, I think, last week, which is this drift thing on the on the joystick mm. thingies. Um and they said that they've made that bit really easy to take out and replace those. So they, they, it's almost as if they've, um, you know, they know that they're going to go first, so they make that the easiest bit to do. <laughs> um, but well, yeah, because yeah, Stadia is exceptionally difficult to get to that part right. to be able to replace it. Yeah, I th no, all I was going to say was that it looked to me as though they should have got a, given it a better score than that, um, than seven out, of, <coughs> 7 out of 10, because, you know, most of it, apart from that battery, I thought looked pretty well accessible and well repairable, but there you go. Yeah, well, it's a step in the right direction. It was Louis Rossman uh, I was talking about. Oh, um, right. Yeah, with his, uh, he, he had a shop in New York, and he was, <coughs> I wish I hadn't had a drink of water now. Um but yeah, he, he mentioned about how, how awful the, the calibration tools are. So it, it does seem that they, uh, some companies like Apple and Google are are making it seem like 
you know, because the Right to Repair Act uh, is falling in the customer's favour. So they're making these things available, but they're not actually making it uh, easy for people to do. Whereas Valve seem to be going the other way. But it'll remain to be seen, you know, um, whether or not they continue with that trend. If, if people start trying to repair things themselves or uh, do modular upgrades and things like that, uh, will that actually benefit Valve in the future? Or will they start uh, having legal sessions uh, because people are trying to <laughs> repair things themselves and not having much luck with it, you know? It, uh, it's a it's a new jungle that uh, people are venturing into, um, where they'll be able to fix things from home, mm-hmm. and the, the perils and pitfalls that come along with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Motorola have presented a 5G enabled neckband uh, that is powered by the <laughs> Snapdragon 8 <laughs> Gen 1 system on chip and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and this allows for AR and VR headsets. Uh, this is a, a pair of glasses obviously that you wear but instead of having all of the the electronics and components inside the glasses they're relying on the neck neck band doing all the heavy lifting that allows the glasses to be lightweight um i I guess kind of like we'd we'd seen with google daydream and samsung had tried in the past where the phone was the kind of brains of all of the the vr and ar side of stuff and they used the camera so you didn't actually have well it was a bulky bit of headwear because the phone was actually built into it but the phone was doing most of the heavy lifting and they were able to make the headwear out of cardboard yeah. uh, ted you'd be excited about this because it's a motorola product that's going to be abandoned uh, yeah I, I don't know if i'm being excited it seems a bit odd to me by um yeah i get the thing about making the vr and ar headsets um lighter and smaller and easier to wear and more comfortable and not so heavy and all the rest of it but putting all the workings of it remotely around your neck i i, I suppose it might work it's a bit like why don't they say right okay here's the latest mobile phone all it is is a slab of glass a, a clear slab of glass and that's it tiny if you want to use it however you've got to plug in this box and put it in your pocket or hang it around your neck because that's all the workings that's the engine that will make it work i suppose it's a it's a thought isn't it perhaps that's the way that it might go as usual motorola lenovo roller throw everything at whatever they fancy and give it a go in the same way as samsung used to and see what sticks and Frankly, I think that this probably won't stick, but we'll see. Well, yeah, yeah VR and AR are are always going to have trouble taking off. Um, it, it, you, I think the the amount of people who actually use it, uh, you're probably counting on one hand, but those that do love it, and they 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 push other people saying you've got to do this, but it's a massive outlay. It's not as simple as just grab, grabbing a PlayStation Four and then being able to play Half Life Alex. Um, it, you have to get uh, you know a, a, a good level of hardware in order to be able to to play some of the the, the desirable VR games. Getting a PlayStation Four and having to go on VR there, it's it's a nice distraction, but it's not something that you're going to uh, really get deeply involved in uh, uh htc vive and valve's attempts are a lot more of a push toward having something that is a viable platform that people are going to want to see and try and it is very very exciting and enticing to to have a go with that um and that that's the best way to to sort of push that that argument that this could be the next big thing but there's the cost that's attached to it. If Motorola were to get that right and actually uh, provide you with a, a very lightweight pair of glasses and the rest of the hardware is is elsewhere, so you can actually just th- throw on a pair of glasses like a pair of 3D glasses and get up and enjoy a, a fully immersive world, then, then that could be VR becoming a thing. Hmm. I guess... You know, Facebook have been looking into this uh, with Oculus and they want their metaverse to be a big part of this. So this kind of technology is something that's going to make that more viable as well, where a wee pair of glasses that you can pick up um, that are that your your phone is maybe the hardware and you can just jump into the Facebook world. That's ultimately what people are going to want to do, not sitting down with 
HTC Vive wrapped around their face and a bunch of cables hooked up to a <laughs> laptop. Um, that's going to feel like something out of the Matrix and everyone's a wee bit afraid of that. Yeah. A wee pair of glasses people aren't afraid of. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I, if we're going to go down the converged route, then it, it needs to be converged. But I do get what the idea is here, because I've had um, VR headsets on. I tried the Samsung ones, and they were really heavy. You, uh, after a while of wearing them, and you know, once the, 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 the novelty's passed and the, 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 the wow factor's gone, you, it starts to, you start to realise you've got this thing on your head, because you, you, you've got the phone in front of your eyes, and that phone can be quite heavy. Um, uh, and this takes that all away and puts, well, it essentially move, removes the whole thing from being anything like a phone. It's a it's a neck band with a box around your neck, and <laughs> may, maybe that's the way it is. You know, forget the phone. Let's get this separated out. It's certainly well you know. specified, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. It does. It looks very good. With well, obviously that Snapdragon eight Gen one is is going to power everything yeah. in the next couple of years and uh, for the next couple of years. Well, no, the Gen 2's already been announced, hasn't it? So, uh, Gen 1 uh, Plus, isn't it? Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember a couple of years, or a couple of years ago, maybe 20 years ago, whenever my brother first moved out to Boston, um, I went to visit, and he, he took me down to this, this place, this sort of virtual reality place, and I got into uh, this simulator, and it had a big red helmet that I had to put on, and um, I think for about $20, I got 20 minutes in this um, virtual reality plane flight right. simulator thing. And I think after about six or seven minutes, I couldn't wait to get out because my neck was killing me. Because right. it was like having a sack of potatoes on your, your forehead. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you were really struggling to keep your neck up. Um, and <laughs> put me off virtual reality for a good long time. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was it was you know it was all polygon based uh, 3D world that I was in. It looked like something from uh, Castle Master on the Amstrad or or Stunt Island on the Commodore Amiga, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it wasn't really sort of overwhelming or anything. It was quite underwhelming, if anything. And uh, with the <laughs> the physical requirements uh, of having the sturdiest neck in the whole of town <laughs> um you uh it, it, it was oh, I, I think i gave up after 10 minutes i was like ah, no keep the money i'm away bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we'll see how well it does um yeah, uh, yeah. 5g enabled as well so they're obviously thinking forward aren't they well that, that, i think that's an important part of it as well where stadia does it all in the cloud and beams it down to your tv so why couldn't it just beam it down to your phone which is connected uh, to the glasses, so you, you are seeing metaverse rendered on Facebook's server. So you don't actually need that level of hardware. All you need is a three G modem or a five G modem in your pocket, a battery, and a, sort of a, maybe a, a high powered Bluetooth connection to these glasses. Yeah, but you wouldn't have the chipset, would you? The the way you the Mo chipset. Motorola are doing this. Oh, because you you're using your phone's hardware. Okay, well the yeah. the Motorola are just trying to keep this separate, aren't they? They're trying to make it a separate thing, like a Walkman, a Sony Walkman. Yay! <laughs> keep your music separate from your phone. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah, like like a Canon XS Seven. Yes. Keep the camera separate. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on to something else, uh, which is techie related. Uh, NVIDIA GTC. Oh, uh, no, the not the N-word. <laughs> uh, the virtual conference is starting on the 21st of March, and there's a bit of a heads up of what we could be seeing. Um, there, there's a load of speakers who are talking about stuff, um, and to be honest, I think was it the last NVIDIA conference that they had, I, I, start, I tuned into it. And I think I lasted about 10 minutes and I had to turn it off because it was incredibly boring. Yeah, because yeah. NVIDIA do an awful lot of stuff. And it, it was cars based and, and things like that. Or automated cars and uh, charging and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I couldn't take it. <laughs> I just had to turn it off. Dull. Uh, Ted, is there anything what is you're it? excited about? What does GTC stand for? Uh, 
the GTT, GTC 2022 conference. Apparently, whatever GTC is, is um, will focus on accelerated computing, deep learning, data science, digital twins, networking, quantum computing, and computing in the data center, cloud, and edge, whatever edge is, apart from a Motorola phone. Um, but uh, uh, 2G is edge, isn't it? Really? Yeah, that was, that's what it used to be, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, whatever that is. I, 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 whenever I see the word NVIDIA, I kind of switch off, to be honest. But I know that you know all about this. So <laughs> you're the one that should be excited about going to this event. Oh, well, that's what it is. GTC is the go-to conference. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Um, I, I couldn't think of anything more boring than sitting through that. Uh, I do notice that in the, the, in the instructions there, it, it does say that... Uh, uh, frequent electric shocks will apply to the audience to ensure that they are paying attention. <laughs> oh, flip, there's a member of Congress from the U.S. House of Representatives going, no thanks, that's like boring. Oh, <laughs> well, look, there's a URL there which says NVIDIA, nvidia.com forward slash GTC. Let's see what that says when we go there. It might explain what GCC is. No, it doesn't. No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and, um, stay up to date with the latest SDKs, hardware and technology at GTC. So it sounds like it's more of a place than a th thing. Oh, right. It's Grand Theft. GTC? It's Grand Theft something city. <laughs> Grand Theft city. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, collaborative virtual worlds of the NVIDIA Omniverse mm -hmm. and beyond. Um, that sounds... Oh, a bit there's like a Twitter. That... There's a Twitter account here that I've just linked to. Um, there's still no indication of what GTC stands for. <laughs> oh, well, ask the Twitter account. Yeah. Well, what does GTC stand for? No, but then I'll look a right fool because I say, for goodness sake, is that a joke? Surely you know what GTC stands for. Well, it's not exactly obvious. You've been Googling for a couple of minutes. Yeah. And you, you haven't. Of course, there's. There, I'm sure there's some listener who's just spitting it yeah, at us yeah. right now. Going, for goodness Look, sake. stop going on about it. It's this. Call yourself <laughs> tech addicts. <laughs> we're not tech, in, uh, tech <laughs> experts. We're tech enthusiasts. Yeah. yeah. Right, moving on. Something safer. Okay, Nintendo. Nintendo's receiving a bit of a backlash because they're stopping people from buying games on the well, it was the Wii U store, isn't it? And the 3DS. Yay, 3DS. Um, as of March 2023, I've which got a 3DS. sounds a bit like... The, oh, do you? Yeah, 3DS XL. It's great. I love it. Well, what you need to do is, um, because this is a bit of a, a shot across the boy, you need to go and get a big... You can put SD cards in them, can't you? Right, okay, this is a... a Download bit, all your games to it. Well, this this story is a bit of a kind of um, misguided one, really, because they're not Nintendo are not saying that they're stopping people buying stuff. What they're saying is that they're stopping people buying stuff on the through the store on the device. Mm. So when I use my 3DS XL, I can, at the moment, go navigate on the device to the store on the device, right? And what they're going to say now is that you, you can't do that anymore. You've got to go to the Nintendo Switch Online service, which you need to go on your phone or your, your computer or whatever to go to, and you can buy stuff from there. They are also going to carve up some of the older titles, though, and this will be appealing to you, Gareth, because of your um, you know buying cartridges over... Um, having digital copies of things and what they're saying is that th those ones that will be the ones to go and the, the library because of that will be reduced by some size um, and they'll end up with only 300 classic games for the Game Boy um, for the Wii um, the Wii U shop and only 187 for the 3DS XL but if you've already got the cartridges then obviously you're all right but one of the things that is obvious that you pointed out before about the cartridges for retro gaming, which is where this fits now, is that when you go and try and buy one, they cost an absolute fortune. So mm. now is the time to act, certainly. That's as I understand this story. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have seen this happen before. Um, Sony did this uh, a number of years ago. I don't know if you remember the Sony Mobile Game Shop. No. Whatever it was called. Um, whenever they released, oh, was it the the PS the the PlayStation Go 
the PSP Go. Yeah. Uh, they also had a couple of Android phones that came out there, and they shared a store. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the mobile shop, I think it was called, the mobile okay. store. Um, there was about 100-odd games that were in there, and Sony just went and, you know, chopped that out. All those games were lost. Anyone who owned them lost access to them, right. unless you downloaded it prior to your your device, um, in which case you, you have it on your memory card for as long as that memory yeah. card lasts. Yeah. Um, or you so don't, or you there, don't there a, reset your phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember there was a couple of... Uh, there was a couple of games I owned, um, and I, I lost access to them, which which narked me. You know, there was nothing you could do about it. And it is possible that Nintendo could be heading that way. There's going to be a point where they just go, right, well, uh, those remaining electronic games that are not available on cartridge, that are available in the eShop here, we're just going to get rid of them because there's been no activity with them. Maybe everyone sort of downloaded them to the, the bit of hardware, and they're only getting one or two downloads here, there, and everywhere of people backing up. Yeah. So they go, well, wh well, what's the point in ha and giving that space over to these 170 or 187 games and 300 games on the Game Boy? Let's just get rid of them. Gone. Um, and yeah, that, that's a lot of games that are lost. Uh, it's, it's revenue that's lost for the indie designers that have made them. You know, they're, they're being told today, we're not going to sell your product anymore. Yeah. Uh, for the, the say the 3ds or the Wii U, and maybe that's only compatible with the 3ds and, and Wii U. Um, so if if it hasn't been released on cartridge, you're not going to make any money. Also, it means that the uh, the price of cartridges is going to go through the roof. Yeah. Uh, for some of these games, uh, it it is a big problem. This is the 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 online side of uh, where they want everyone to get their games from an online store. Whenever they start to cull some of the older titles that aren't moving, uh, they would be lost. I, I, I do worry about the day that Valve decide, you know, we've got 50,000 games sitting in the Steam store. Let's get rid of half of them. Because there's a load of junk in there. And, and I'm, I'm, I fully admit, yeah, Steam store does have a lot of crap way down when you start digging. I know because my son buys loads of it. He maybe has three pounds left after his Steam cards run out and he'll go and buy this crap game that looks all right and then he plays it for five minutes and it's broken it doesn't work that sort of crap needs to be removed uh where it's just someone who's taken a whole load of unity engine elements and thrown them together into a bad game that's broken and trying to make a a wee bit of money off it you know that that, that kind of stuff needs to go away um i fully agree with that but you know where there's there's genuine products that maybe a lot of people have bought and eventually they they, they will be removed because they're old, um, uh, because they're not getting much traction anymore, because new games are more enticing than old games, and they generate sales. Uh, we'll, we'll see them all just actually disappear, and they'll become vaporware. It's all physical versus digital again, isn't it? It's the whole mm. the whole story. I was thinking of my three DSXL there, which I've, I've got a, an actual cartridge to put in there of um, Angry Birds, and you can't get that for for love nor money now. There's a, a, a very different Angry Birds that you can download on the Nintendo store, but it's not the same by any stretch of the imagination. Not anywhere near as good. Um, it, the, the, the gameplay on the original was one that I've got is much better, and I was just thinking that eventually that 3DS XL, the hardware will break, and mm -hmm. I've got that cartridge. And of course, now that we've gone, now that I've joined you and we're talking about gaming and cartridges, I, I won't just throw it away. I'll keep it. I've, I've got about half a dozen um, uh, actual cartridges that I will now just make sure I blue and well keep. Because some back up to the Clyde. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because somewhere down the line, someone like Evercade will make another handset that the cartridge will be able to go into, and you'll be able to just play it on something else. So, but yeah, if they take it away from online digital stores, you don't stand a chance, do you? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the other, the other day. I was I was going through my Amazon Im image library. Where I, ha I that's where I, I've stored all of the images that I've created for various reviews and things that I've done over the years. And I came across a game that I reviewed years ago. Called, I think it was called Starfront. I can't quite remember the name of it. Um, and it was made by Gameloft. And it was a, a real-time strategy game. 
that I had on a tablet back in Android 4 kind of territory. Mm-hmm. And you can't find it on, if you go on Game Loft's uh, page of, of on the Play Store, there is no listing for this game. But I remember buying it for a fiver because I loved it. I really enjoyed it, and that's why I reviewed it and things like that. And I, I had loads of screenshots from it. And I, I can't find the original review. I think it, it must have, uh, it might be on Tracy and Matt. I'm not too sure. Um, but it, it was originally on the original Mobile Tech Addicts that I reviewed it. And it seems to have gone now. Um, but uh, I, I, was, I went looking for the game to see if I could find it. And it, it doesn't exist anymore. I, I, it, well, I'm sure I could find it if I got the right name. Because I can't even remember what the name of the game was. Um, but uh, I just have a few screenshots of it. And... Um, I, it, it's gone. I, I purchased that and it's gone completely. And I can think of another couple of games whenever I cast my memory back to games that I've bought in the Google Play Store that have just gone. So they are. They, they, they do yeah. cull them and uh, they rely on you not remembering that you've bought them. Well, I wonder if the cartridges will ever just go away. I was, I was thinking about now with the switch you know the nintendo switch it is worth making sure you buy your games on cartridges so that because in future at some point those will start going away as well and you won't be able to play them anymore well yeah 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 people you know obviously they do get backed up online so you can always find the roms of things online but say for example that that those playstation mobile games some of them don't exist anymore uh, they may be on some PlayStation Go's hidden in an attic somewhere and they'll eventually be discovered. But uh, there, there's one game in particular that I can't remember the name of. And it was a really cool little game where you were uh, a tank r- uh, driving around an island and you uh, were being shot at by turrets. And you had to you, you had to r- drive in a su- certain way that you got the turrets to destroy each other. And it was it was a fun game. And I, I can't remember what it's called. I've had a look through our listings of all the games that were in that library, and I, I, I can't identify which one it is. But uh, I, I'm sure that that game is, is going to be really difficult to find. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happened to the, the poor developer that, that put that together? Because it's not available on any other store. Uh, the the idea was sound, so it's probably been ripped off by various other developers and, and, uh, and made on various other platforms since then. Yeah. Very, very worrying. Yes, all right. And moving into Donald Trump. <laughs> well, this is just a quick one to say that the Truth Network, the Truth Social Network, which he's now put out there because he got kicked off of Twitter and everyone else, is apparently being opened, released and started on Monday. So we can all join up with our Confederate flags and go and join his network. <laughs> okay all right well um, you know that that's one side of uh of of people's opinions um and they'll be able to where they believe that they're being pushed off of certain social networks they'll have a social network to go and and discuss things very diplomatic uh, response with like-minded people very very diplomatic you should be in the core <laughs> no. well, uh, would, uh, would you be downloading it the the truth network i uh-huh. no i i'm i'm not going to join that i i don't think that what donald trump stood for let's not get political please no 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 i'm thinking more upon about along the lines of i am curious to see what he's doing here and is it going to be maybe a copy of twitter or a copy of facebook or a copy of linkedin or something like that um i i am curious to see what the app is like and what kind of direction it's going to I'm follow sure i'm going to curious coverage. if it works I'm sure or is it, if it's covered in frames there, or there'll, it, be, there'll be flood coverage of it on after monday you'll you'll be able to see reviews of it all over the place you don't need to go and join it <laughs> no no well it, it, it's an american sort of thing so it, it, it doesn't do us any benefits um by by us signing up for it but we can sit back and watch and, and i am just interested to see how much money's been invested in it, and if it's a really, if it's a good, robust platform that he, that uh, uh, the uh, Donald has created here. Um, Donald, so I, first name terms, are we? Yeah, me and Donald, we we go way back. Oh, here, uh, oh look, it's it's done already. The the it's truthnetwork.com, but maybe it's already started. <laughs> oh yeah, the truthnetwork.com. It um it's it's already up there. Maybe it's the app that's just being released. 
Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, look, they're talking about taking over the America again, and, um, oh, dear, let's let's steer away from that. Hang on a second. I think I've got something else here. Uh, this isn't <laughs> truthnetwork.com. Yeah. Uh, the mission of Truth Network is to inspire the sound Bible teaching and Christian network. Oh, is that not the same thing? Okay. I put no, I, I put I it. put Trump. Well, it seems to have lots of Trump stuff across it, which might say something. Yeah, it could do, yeah. Well, uh, we'll we'll see what what he what he's built and uh, yeah, yeah. If it takes uh, off, it, it's a, uh, a no, viable it money maker. So why not? It is. I, it, this is the one I'm looking at. Is not the one you were looking at. I don't think because it's all about um, the war against Biden and stuff. It's all very political, not religious. Anyway, one for another day. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I'm sure there'll be good amounts of coverage on YouTube and they still will be able to see people review it. And uh, if Donald has, uh, has built a, a worthy platform for for uh, his follower, followers, fans, um, uh, people who are interested in him. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, moving into Flap Your Trap about an app. Uh, Google has released, released a new build uh, for their Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. Now, oh, I've yeah. been following this quite... What's wrong? I forgot to uh, install it be oh, before yeah. recording. <laughs> um, uh, because I've got a 6, a 6 Pro here, but I've kind of not been using it. Um, and I meant to, before we recorded, install this update. Um, but apparently they pulled it as well, didn't they? they? They put it out there. Then everyone started complaining about the fingerprint scanner going haywire again. Then they pulled the update altogether. And then they, I think they've now let it out again. But no one seems to quite know what it's about, do you? Um, well, no, um, because it's a wee bit off step. Uh, it's it's yeah. out of sync with their their updates. But, you know, I'm, I'm currently trying to debate whether or not to just wait for the S22 to come at a, a viable price um, or or go and get the, the Pixel 6 Pro. I'm not too fussed on the 6. I would rather have the 6 Pro. But for every good review, glowing review you see of the Pixel 6, there's a, there's a shockingly bad re review, and I can't work out whether people are just being overly positive about it or people are just being overly negative about it. <laughs> um, but it, it smacks of, because I was stung with the Nexus 6P, um, I bought that bloody phone and enjoyed it for, <laughs> what, six hours, and then it died. Um, and I've, I've, I haven't gone back to Google since, although I did use the Pixel 1 or 2, I can't remember which, for a, for a, a few months. Um, the the Pixel 6P <laughs> Pro um, might be uh, the second retelling of that Nexus 6P, and it might just be Google getting unlucky with their sixth generation version of their flagship phone. They're out to uh, get yeah. you, obviously. <laughs> Could be. And I know that if I buy the 6P, sorry, the 6 Pro, um, it'll get progressively worse. If I don't buy it, it'll get progressively better. <laughs> so I, as I, I'm just sitting back watching, um, trying to work out what to do uh, as my contract comes to an end uh, at the end of this month. Get a Samsung. And unless, unless you want the particularly want the um camera the four times optical zoom i've, I've got it here and, and when i'm mm. I take photographs of the with the four times optical zoom it's really really impressive i have to say even all the things i've said about preferring to have a proper camera on that thingy with four times zoom it's very very impressive but if you yeah. but if you're not going to be impressed with that if that's not the thing then we know that pixel google released pixel phones too early there's they're full of bugs they fix them eventually they get there but um you know you don't get the polished products that other manufacturers do straight out the box fully tested not saying that samsung's devices are always fully tested um, on day one but you know what i mean yeah yeah well it, we already know that there is a android 12 version 0.5 essentially coming android 12 l is yeah. arriving so i'm i'm concerned as to they're they're polishing this up now on the pixels and then 12 l is going to arrive 
no, which is another version of Android. No, I don't think I don't think the phones will get 12L as a general release. I think that the 12L will be pushed out to um, tablets and and bigger screen devices. Um, I don't think they'll be across all the phones that they're being tested on beta on phones i've got it on my my 12 uh, my pixel 5 but i don't think that'll be a general release to everyone personally i think that the and this is why 13 is now in developer preview android 13 is is going to be the the proper release that's worrying dan <laughs> every word that came out of your mouth there was concern right. um so Samsung's the way to go then, you think? Well, if I, if I was you and um, I had 800 quid to spend or whatever you've got on the choice, or 900 quid even, um, I personally would buy a Samsung, I think. Um, yeah. But Because at the end of the day, Pixels, well, apart from what I just said about the camera, Pixels are great, but they're just really boring they don't have when you buy a samsung you just get all the bells and whistles and all the decks and the integration and the pen support the s pen support and blah 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 hdmi out for putting stuff across to your telly um now i know they've taken away 3.5 millimeter and um micro sd cards now but until up until now you've had those pretty much um, but I think, yeah, on balance, if it was my money and I wanted to buy a phone, like in your case, it's going to probably do you two years, I would get the Samsung. Hmm, yeah. It's a really difficult time at the moment because there's not much else. It's either you know the, the Pixel 6 Pro or the, I think, the S22 Plus. They're the two most exciting phones. I think the Ultra is a wee bit too expensive, although... People are saying it, it is the be all and end all, um, but I yeah, that's the note. I, spending spending smart money is difficult right now, and with well, my S10 Plus is, has just been given a couple more <laughs> years of life. Yeah, from updates, it has, and right. it's something I'm very comfortable yeah. with. So I I feel less compelled to upgrade. Keep your money in the bank. I, yeah, but I still want something new and shiny. <laughs> Get a gaming console. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Or a Chromebook. Hard drive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think that's what the way I would go, though. Only mainly because pixels are just so boring. Lovely to be close to the beating heart of Google and what they're up to and all the updates. But Samsung are getting good at that as well now, too. So, yeah, I don't know. It's one thing about the Pixel 6 that uh, I've, I've noticed from some of the reviews, and that's what people keep saying. That this is running stock Android. Yeah. It's not running stock no, Android. No. They, they, it's it's running the Pixel side yeah, of Android. They've moved away from that completely. There was a time. If you want as close to stock Android as you can get now, you need to buy a Nokia XR20 or a, a um, the the Fairphone. That's pretty pretty standard. Um, there was another phone I reviewed recently, which just really felt like stock. But yeah, you're right. Pixels have got their own flavour now, their own build and their own everything. And it, it's not vanilla as it used to be at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it just seems at this moment in time, Google can't seem to be doing right for doing wrong with the Pixels. And, yeah. <laughs> and they just can't fix these bugs. Mm-hmm. It sounds a bit too Nexus 6P for my liking. Yeah. So I'll stay away from it for the time being. Yeah. All right, uh, Windows 11 could be getting a very nice upgrade uh, thanks to a big taskbar update. Uh, Microsoft seemed to be focusing on the taskbar uh, to turn it into something that is really quite useful and... Um, Windows 10. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> very much Windows 10. <laughs> well, why do you say that? Because they, when they did Windows 11, they took away... One of the big complaints about the Windows 11 thing was the taskbar, because they took away lots of the control and the things you could do with it and the things you now can't do with it, and now they're, they're putting them back, which is much more like Windows 10. For example, dragging and dropping stuff to put on there, which is now not possible, but one of the big ones was resizing it, just a simple drag to make it bigger or smaller, or moving it to the left or the top or the right or whatever... And and all of that functionality just went away. Um, pinning stuff to the to the taskbar was just something easy and quick in Windows 10, and they're bringing it back. 
Mm, That's yeah. why I say that. <laughs> Well, um, one of the things that they're they're adding is the ability to um, have have new. Uh, there's a new sort of uh, expansion menu that, uh, that that's a dot dot dot, and then you can get more uh, icons that are good programs that are running and, and shortcuts. And that's really like annoying. That. A bit like, well, it is, but I think most people who are, who use the taskbar a lot. Uh, have already migrated it over to the left again and not having it centralized, which gives them a huge amount of space to be able to have various different shortcuts and running programs. Oh, no, no, so I'm talking about the, the, the arrow on the right. So at the moment with Windows 11, um, all of those things on the right-hand side are hidden. In my Windows 10, which I'm looking at now, they're all available on there. If you go into the settings on the taskbar you've got to dig down into the um, menus on the taskbar settings on windows 11 to um individually untick each one to make it show it otherwise it gets buried in this overflow menu and that's what i was talking about and windows 11 um, are supposed to be changing that so again it's back to windows 10 you can just have them all out and that stupid little arrow has gone away forever right the, the the icons that appear beside the clock of your of yeah, your running yeah. task. That's the one. So if you look to the left of those, are you looking at oh. Windows 11 now? Yes. Yeah, well, to the left of those icons on the right next to your clock, there's a little up arrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you click yep. on that, 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 that shows you the ones that they're not showing you. On Windows 10, I haven't got that arrow, and all of, the, all of my things that I want to be on display are there. Simple. Okay. And as I, um, I, I have the ones that I wanted on display because I've already moved them. Yeah, um, yeah. I have, Plex, WireGuard, and PCloud are available there, um, and I've put everything back up into that up arrow area because I don't use them fairly often. Actually, I'll move Google Drive out and put it in there, and exactly, and I've got e four exactly, things. and and that what you just did is the, the thing that people won't know to do unless they're shown how to do it because people don't know how to go to menus. Oh, Th right, They expect okay. it just so to you know. I, and they'll say, what's that stupid arrow doing there? I might, that arrow wasn't there on Windows 10. I don't like it there. Go, take it away. It was there on Windows 10. No, it's not. I'm looking at Windows 10 now, and there's no arrow. Well, you could turn it on then. Well, by default, it's not on. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think the whole taskbar thing is a good thing that they're doing. The sad thing is that this is only being rolled out to um, developer previews, um, and it won't arrive until... When is it? August, I think it said somewhere. Is October. It October. It's sort of flipping miles away, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But hopefully we'll start seeing flourishes of it appear here, there, and everywhere. Mm. And they, they are redeveloping the, the media player, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. Because uh, opening up an MP3 and having Groove appear on the screen is like, <laughs> are we still using... Why isn't it Zoom or... You know, it, it's, Groove just reminds you of a failed platform that they tried to put out. I'm sure yeah. not many people really remember it or associate it with that anymore. They just take it, oh, right, Gro uh, Windows Media Player is now called Groove. But it, it's it's a legacy application that uh, still has that kind of branding. Yeah. Um, <sighs> what are they doing with the Media Player? So that, that means you can default it to, to what you want. Well, you can do that now, can't you? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, you can you can change it to a, a different media player, but the Windows um, the Windows default one that they have is going to be redesigned. Oh, I see content. what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So it'll be, it'll Which be, be nice. more attractive to to actually choose to use. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sticking in more features is always recommended. Um, the video editing side of things, which not many people actually realize that there is an editing function inside the the media player photo gallery thing. Um, oh yeah. It, Having more there and having it a bit more upfront and visible to find for so people don't run off and buy themselves a video editor uh, whenever they just want to make some simple trims and things like that to to a video. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, they they need to make that a bit more obvious. I think the last one yeah. that they're doing is to the what's it called? I've forgotten what they call it. Um, the widgets. They're they're pepping up the widgets or something like that yeah yeah they're, they're called widgets aren't they have you clicked on widgets since widgets became a thing well what's annoying is that you don't even have to click on it you just have to mouse over and it pops up 
if you accidentally move your mouse over where it is on the bar, uh, it, it just comes up. Well, unless you turn it off, oh. of course. It doesn't on mine, and I haven't turned it off. Uh, well, it I have does. to click on it for it to pop in. Okay. Well, obviously, you've arranged yours better than I have. Then I thought that um, I didn't know you could turn that off. I shall try and find how to turn it off then, yeah. But, yeah, the widgets are just stupid, aren't they? Well, unless you're buried in Microsoft services, I guess. And, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at it now because it's also available on Windows 10, you see, the whole widget thing. Not in as, uh, as much glory, but... It, all of those things that I'm looking at now, I, I wouldn't choose. Well, I would choose the Guardian, I suppose. But there's, you know, there's there's crap in there that I just wouldn't be interested in looking at. So consequently, I never move my mouse over it. it; just dies a death. Do you ever look at it? Um, I'm I'm just looking at it now for the first time since I think we discussed it arrived. Right. Um, and yeah, wow, uh, lots of Daily Express posts, lots of them. Yeah. I don't read the Daily Express, but no. I think Microsoft must have some sort of special deal with them to push their posts to me more so than anything else. If you, cl- I mean, if you wanted to invest in this, you could, I suppose. If you click on the cog to the settings, it opens a web page in Flipping Edge, incidentally, but that's another matter. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and you could then start personalising it and making it your own and blah, blah, blah. So if you wanted to invest in Microsoft services, I, I suppose it would be worth doing, but I don't really. No, I've, I've just opened up the widget settings and there's absolutely nothing there that is of interest in the slightest. No. Oh, family safety, that's about it. Hmm. Hopefully that means I'll be able to lock and unlock my son's computer from here. That would be handy. Right. And I'm so invested in Google News and Google everything that, it, oh, and, and my whole life is set edge. up with that, and it's all there and it's done. I don't want to start again. Come on. No, no, it's not worth your time. No. Uh, moving on to a viable platform, um, <laughs> Pixel will be able to stream Android apps onto your Chromebook. And here's how it works. Uh, Android, no, 9 to 5 Google have put together a little video about sending text messages uh, from your Pixel's uh, uh, operating system through your phone to people. And instead of actually having, you know, a, a messaging client on the Pixel, it's actually live streaming it from the device, which is... Interesting. Actually, it's tweets. Sorry, they're, they're, they're tweeting, saying, you won't believe where I've tweeted this from. Ted, I can, is, well, is I, this... I completely misunderstood this, then, if, if what you just <laughs> said was true. I thought this article was about the fact that they were going to be doing what Samsung and Microsoft are doing with your, with your, um, your phone and the hub and the, the Chrome... The, the Chrome OS no. that you see. Well, I, th- I think there is on the right hand side. There, yeah, there is hub. a sort of a hub, but it's it's a whenever you want to send a tweet, it opens up uh, a, a tweet window that is live on the phone, and and pushes it that way. So you're not actually opening up a a client in the Chromebook. You're opening up the, a, a streamed window from your phone. Yeah, but that but that's what. Um, the Samsung devices do under your phone companion anyway. The, the, I think the difference here is that yeah. they're, they're saying that it's going to be baked into the hub on Chromebooks, but they've also tested it, it says here, on Windows as well, which is very confusing because Windows or Mac or Linux devices are going to get the same treatment, which is why I thought it was like your phone companion. So at the moment, I've got um, a Microsoft Duo, okay, the original generation Duo, and that allows you to um to to live um to, to 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 use the apps on the computer not in a um chromebook i'll grant you but on a windows computer um and it allow it the same way as samsung does it, it allows you to just use the computer screen as if you're using the phone and if you look yeah. at your phone you can see the same thing going on it all it's, it's all live streaming inverted commas um, but this is also including the Chromebook, and I, I'm a bit confused now. So I'll shut up now, and you tell us what it's really about. <laughs> no, no, and I, I think maybe we are kind of talking about the same thing, 
but from different ways. You're you're probably co- talking quite sensibly about it, whereas I'm making a ham-fisted, <laughs> nonsensical, uh, <laughs> rambly way of, of talking about it. Yes, I, I suppose the, the your phone thing. Whenever, whenever you say you got a message on Instagram on your Windows 11 device, yeah, you click on the notification, and then it brings up a little window of your phone and. Annoyingly, it says unlock your phone, and then your phone yeah. shows yeah. that uh, it's it's being used by another device. Yeah, that kind of thing um, is is what they're doing here, and it's like a live tile uh, to your phone yeah. through the the, the, the Chromebook. Uh, yeah. And and the Chromebook um, does that, or will do that, by via the hub. And the hub's been around for a while now, but the hub is really underpowered and it needs development, which is what this is, they're, they're talking about. But the Windows thing, you see, is different. And um, what they're saying is that this will also happen on Windows. And it is about time that that hub that we see on Chromebooks is available to Android and Pixel users um, and, and, and Google users on Windows. And I, I, I've been saying that for a while now. It'd be great to see that cross-platform, the the actual mm. Google Hub thingy. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, it's it's still the unlocking side of things. I find that the most infuriating thing. I, I don't use your phone on Windows 11 anymore because I find it, frankly, kind of useless because I'm constantly having to unlock my phone despite the fact I have a Samsung phone sitting here. Um, if I try to do something on it, it'll 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 show up, unlock your phone. Um, it, it's sitting in a cradle right now. It can see me. It can use the, the screen camera to, to, uh, to see my face, but it just doesn't work. And more often than not, you're like, oh, screw that, and just pick up your phone and use it yourself. Um, I think it requires or just, Bluetooth or just more so touch than... Or just touch your phone screen. But then I have to reach out and touch my phone screen and unlock it with my fingerprint. Yeah, well, I, I do that as well. But um, I, well, you could you could just take the um, security off temporarily, or you could leave your phone to not go into lock screen for thirty minutes. Oh no, you can't on Samsung, can you? I think no. Samsung is only ten minutes, isn't it? Um, but yeah, you could leave it for ten minutes without it locking up. Yeah, but, and and also um, you you can you can have it unlocked. At your geographic location, so if yeah, I'm yeah, in the house yeah. at the computer, but then I have a child who who likes to unlock his tablet and computer by trying to get into people's phones <laughs> behind your back. Right. So I need my phone to lock okay. uh, so that he can't do that. Right. Another good advertisement for not having a family. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. He's he's savvy though. Um, he found that my wife had an, an old Huawei. Uh, in a bedside drawer, <laughs> he was that that didn't have security on. He was able to turn that on and go into Family Link and unlock his tablet for a while, <laughs> and then whenever the battery started to run out, he charged it. Wow. He did. He went and charged it and then <laughs> put it back again. So <laughs> you know, I walk up to into his room at half past midnight and he's sitting watching Roblox videos on YouTube, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" How is that unlocked? Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't know. I really don't. So I had to go and work out this whole thing and eventually find that. Crafty. They're, they yeah, find a yeah. way. Who'd have kids? No one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 9to5Google uh, to have also uh, had a look at Google Play Store as it shows uh, new app installs. Uh, directly on the home screen, a bit like Apple. Uh, an awful uh, lot way. like Apple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, what that, well, we... that is if you set up that it, it appears on your home screen, of course. What we can, um, what can we copy from Apple this week? Oh, I know. When people <laughs> update their apps, they haven't, they can't see it on the home screen actually happening. Let's do that. Actually, they. Well, I noticed that happens on Android TV. Um, I, I sat there looking at, at the YouTube icon on Android TV as it was going updating, updating, updating. I sat there for about five minutes updating. I was like, "Can I use this yet, or or what?" What I have noticed is that um, um, 
this is uh, obviously um, a copy of what Apple are doing uh, and have been doing for a long time. But I did notice that on setup of new phones recently, like over the last few months, you when the if you copy from say Pixel to Pixel, when it's setting up your your home screen with all the apps in place because it's put them back where they should be from your previous phone, you did see the process um, bars then of it uh, setting up and doing itself. Um, so it's a kind of mm. extension of that really. Um, and yeah, it's great. I'm not complaining. I'm not, um, you know, I think that that, what they do is, 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 is a nice feature and why not nick it? Yeah. Yeah. And they haven't done this before. Not that I know of. No, not, 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 um, in the core Google, um, Android code. No. Okay. All right. I just, uh, maybe Samsung or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some plus or something. Yeah, absolutely. Someone else might have done it, but. Yeah, well, it, it, it's it's good to see. Um, if you're one of the, I I don't have whenever I install a new app, it doesn't go straight to my home screen. Um, it'll just go into the drawer, and then I'll choose to make the shortcut to the home screen. Yeah, but if you, but, but if you open the drawer, you would see it doing it there. That's the point. Ah. It, it it would do it wherever it is. It'll also do it on the home page of your Google Play Store screen. So if if you're in your Play Store store screen, if it if the app that's being updated happens to be in the view you're looking at, you'll see it happening there as well. It's it's pretty cross system. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll I'll let them away with that. It's <laughs> useful. <laughs> Okay, uh, Google could open up fast pairing to all manufacturers uh, using Android 13. So whenever it comes to, no, Google, I don't want you to start dictation. No, why? Why did you do that? Um, Sorry. (laughs) Uh, Google has uh, the the low energy fast pairing thing uh, that allows them to uh, fast pair, I guess, with uh, various uh, Bluetooth accessories. But they may be changing it so that it uh, all accessories will be able to fast pair ted do you have any fast pairing accessories? I, i'm just working out what you said there you you said google open up fast pair and that's why you got it opening up trying to do something for you i reckon anyway um yeah, dictation came up and it started uh recording yeah. and transcribing this fast pair thing was quite invisible really to most of us i i didn't realize it was around apparently it was around in 2017 going forward and i do notice right. these days that um pairing things um not not necessarily first up pairing things but once you've paired them it works really really slickly slickly changing <laughs> um speakers um turning things off um turning them back on switching between speakers and headphones and all of that sort of thing it just seems to know if you start playing something it just seems to know and i think that that's part of this whole fast pairing thing and and the story here really is that they with android 13 they're opening this up to um anyone to use which will encode will, will include devices that don't have gms on them so all of your huawei stuff and anyone else that's using the core android code for android 13 will be able to make use of the fast pairing um including incidentally um the uh chromebooks bringing chromebooks into it and windows and as you said android tvs and all that sort of thing smart home devices so it's it'd be interesting going forward because that's one of the annoying things about bluetooth is that sometimes it just doesn't work and you think yeah. what oh, c- come on for goodness sake i was i was in the lounge the other day and i was using my phone and, and i couldn't get the sound to go to the telly i was hdmi cabling out to the telly and and the sound just wouldn't work and i thought what's wrong with this and i was work and i could hear it in the background and sure enough it was playing the sound through the speaker down the other end of the static which i'd previously been bluetoothing with and that wasn't very smart but most of the time i think it is so fast pairing good on you that's a good test of your, your Bluetooth there as well, that was able to, what's yeah. it, about 10 feet through tin wall and stuff? 20 feet, probably. Yeah, yeah right, okay. Not bad. It was quite good. But I, I, I was sat there trying to work it out. What, where, where's that coming from? And I, <laughs> it's then eventually I realised it. I turned the Bluetooth off and, bing, the television was really loud then. <laughs> well, uh, Google has also been busy uh, updating Google Drive to have uh, searchy, filtering, oh, yeah. buttony type things. Can you see this? Have yet? these come through for you? No, no I, can't, I yeah. can't see it either. It's not. I think it's going to happen on. Um, let me have a look now. 
you've got to click on the search all conversation no oh that's the wrong one you've got to click on search to see it so you go to drive and then click on the the thing at the top that says search in drive and at the moment you see a drop down list of stuff right yeah. Um, but actually, when this is rolled out to you, you'll be able to see a, a line across, like you do in other Google services, which allow you to filter down into um, different uh, categories in your drive. It's a little change, but I think it's a good one and, and, and a welcome one. Well, it, it says in this article on XDA developers that, like Gmail... Yeah. If I do that in Gmail, I do oh. Yeah, it drops down. You get you get these little options, the little buttons that you can select. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, has attachment last seven days. So Google Drive is going to get something yeah. akin to that yeah. that allows you to search by file type. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Mm, but it's uh, it's supposed to be arriving. I checked my um, Chromebook yesterday, which has got. Um, version 100 on it and that hasn't got it yet either so I don't know it's probably an account server side switch yeah well hopefully this means uh, Google will um, make 10 terabytes uh, slightly more palatable to buy because then I'll use Google Drive for everything oh I see yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying the amount of money that they want it was 20 quid or something like that a month at the moment for 10 terabytes nah nah Right, back to Windows 11, flip-flopping about, but still maintaining the Android app thing. Oh, uh, we're... I meant to test oh, I meant to test this as well. Can you see this? Um, no, I thought I, I figured this was actually on one of the beta streams. I haven't... Um, I, I didn't know we could test this yet. Yeah, Android, Android Apps Store. If, you, if, you're, if you've got Windows 11 now, today, uh -huh. you should be yes. able to go to the store and look for the Android... Um, the the uh, the the, the um, um, Amazon App Store app inside the Google Store. Sorry, Google. I get confused with all these stupid apps. <laughs> the Microsoft Store. You can look inside there and look for the Amazon Store app. <laughs> and if you can't see it, then you can refresh your store until you do see it. And then you'll be able to see the store in there. Oh, right, back to you. Can you see it? Okay. Um, no. Right, well, you haven't got it yet. Uh, then. It's great. I thought it was supposed to be arriving yesterday for everyone, but obviously not you. It's a Northern, no, Northern no, Ireland it's probably thing. Not Northern yeah. Ireland, yeah. I meant to check. Uh, I'm sorry. I meant to check that before we recorded on my laptop, and I didn't. Naughty boy. Right, and search for Amazon. First thing that comes up is Amazon Prime, Amazon Music, Amazon Shopping, for Toshiba. You have to you have to refresh something. Um, let me read this now. Um, you have to go. Oh, here we go. You go to Microsoft Store Library and check for updates. So go get updates. Microsoft Store Library, check for updates, and then you have to restart it afterwards. And then the the Amazon App Store should then be in the library. Okay, there was one update, and that was to my HEVC video extension. Right. Uh, well, they're obviously lying then. Totally. If I quit now, well, maybe it's America it only. Again. Perhaps it, ah, perhaps it's a USA <laughs> thing. It wouldn't be surprising, would it? I, that might have been something that I noticed, and that's why I didn't get dug into this because I figured now that we 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 won't have that yet, or it was beta channel or something like that. There's no way this is going to be knocking on our doors just yet i thought it was i thought that this was this was news i thought this was news <laughs> okay oh yes if you say it in a stylish voice <laughs> then it might be true okay, oh so you've got I've to have that. you've got to have um this month's second tuesday patch as well um by the looks of it so what is it we passed the second tuesday haven't we is your windows um up to date your your software it is. I right. noticed there was a an update just the other day, but I'm still not seeing Amazon okay. apps. Well, it, I I think it might be America only. Oh, hang on a minute. It says USA only. Oh, flip right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll stop looking then. Okay, we could move on to another topic that might be relevant to our listeners. Okay. <laughs> Chrome OS news, which is 
hopefully UK based. Uh, how to turn off and on caps lock on your Chromebook, Ted? How do you? This do is that? a little one, just a little one, a snippet which I didn't know was there. I hadn't looked in the menus hard enough, but you can um, instead of uh, well, if you want to um, turn the caps lock on your Chromebook, all you've got to do is press the Alt key down and the Everything button on the left there in the middle, um, which should be the Tab button. And, but if you want to, to do that with one button and not a, 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 a combination hotkey, you can do that. And there's a place you can go, go and set those. Go, go to Chromebook settings and you go into device and then you go into keyboard and then you can see a drop down of all the different things that you can change and assign the keys to. And I'd never seen that before. So if you want to, you can just assign that search key to caps lock and be done with it and never use it for anything else. But, of course, you won't get the search function from it then. But you could assign that to something else. Like you could say, right, I want my shift right shift key to be the search button. Anyway, um, buried in the settings, go and have a look at that one. The world we live in, eh? Yeah, very exciting. Um, what, uh, what other Chrome OS news is there? Um, the OS Flex, this is a compl complicated one. The, the Chrome OS Flex is what do you remember what the um when google bought out um cloud ready right which turns old computers into chromebooks oh yeah. yes yeah right well they've now released this um as chrome os flex and you can actually download this now i do believe well, it might be america only i suppose um you can download it to a pen or whatever you want to put it onto and then you can fire up your old computer um which is now knackered and past it your your windows or your mac computer and um, boot it up with the pen and turn it into a Chromebook with this Chrome OS Flex, which used to be called Cloud Ready. Um, now, the question came up this week about what to do with Chromebooks that are end of life, and is this yeah. of any use to them at all? And the answer from Google is, no, this is not what it's for. The when your Chromebook because <laughs> that's devastating to their sales. Yes, that's uh, probably true. When your Chromebook comes to end of life, that's it. Google still won't give you any more supports or updates or whatever else. This is a designed um, feature for turning old PCs and Macs into Chromebooks, not for getting around the end of life of Chromebooks. So that should be out there, as far as I'm concerned, unless it's American only. Um, right now and people can use it so if you've got an old windows computer kicking about in your garage anyone dear listener give it a try and let us know if it works and if it's well done. there are basic specs yeah the, the, it's got a minimum device requirements yeah, yeah. which is an architecture of I, intel and arm uh, x64 six, or x86 64 bit compatible devices plus four gigabytes of ram yeah well everyone's got that on their computer the computer that's kicking about in the garage come on well i'm just thinking about the one that i have not kicking around the garage but sitting over there looking at me going well, use me i had a great keyboard <laughs> uh, it has two gigabytes of ram oh uh, right well then it looks like you might not get away with that no no it's got 256 gigabytes of internal storage and it would be great if I could get that going, but no, no. And I can't upgrade it. Oh, maybe I could. Maybe I could. See, there was a... Wasn't it Windows? One of the Windows had a problem where you couldn't upgrade it over four gigabytes of RAM at one stage, whenever Windows, say, 7 or Vista came along. Something oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Service. yeah, I remember that. And I think that was an issue. Even if you installed it, it didn't recognize it, did it? Yeah, yeah, and the, they had to, you had to move on to another version of Windows yeah. or something, yeah. or get Service Pack three or something that, right. that, that did that. I remember, and I don't that. think I ever. Maybe I, but then I can't even boot that up to go and get. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look at that. I'll, I'll I'll tinker around with it and see if I can get four gigs into it. Okay. And lastly, before we leave this section, there's a new Asus Chromebook Flip which our friend Kevin Tofel on About Chromebooks is raving about, thinks it's great, and it does mm. look as though it's really well specified. You know, it, it, does, it, it does make me wonder, though, about this whole Chromebook thing, is that, you know, if you're 
going to have a Chromebook. It's supposed to work in the cloud, and you shouldn't need to have all this hardware. And But <laughs> laying that aside, if you want to do it that way, um, like our friend Richard Yates has done just recently, bought an all-singing, all-dancing Chromebook, um, then, then great. Try and make it your own computer and have some decent storage on it and loads of RAM and a serious chipset. Um, this particular one has got two Thunderbolt USB-Cs on the sides as well, a, a HDMI out, and uh, what's, that, what's that thing on the... Are you looking at the picture of this? Yeah. You see where it's got Kensington slot on one side? There's a There's a port on the other side which is a little kind of plastic square thingy. It doesn't say what it is. What's that? It's a plastic square thingy. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Is that everything? Everything's no. listed except that thingy, which looks like it might be an optical out cable or, or something. It's got a flap over it. Anyway, yeah. um, anyway, this looks really, really nice. It looks lovely. Kevin is um, over over the moon about it coming along. And it is an interesting 16-inch size as well, which has not come before. Backlit keyboard. Looks a nice keyboard. Nice big track mouse, trackpad. Um, and, yeah, fancy one of those? Uh, the, the, yes, I do. Um, under that picture, it says... And the old image I captured in January, shown above, no longer has what appears to be the garaged stylus. Ah. My guess is the convertible will work with an optical USB. That's stylus. what so it they was. Gone for that. It, well, that was the stylus hole, and they couldn't be bothered to take it away <laughs> completely. Though. So they put a little door over it. Yeah, so <laughs> if you rip it open, uh, as with. That laptop that I, I, I discussed earlier, it has a, a 3G modem in it, but uh, you can't use it because they just they uh, vacuum formed a bit of plastic over the port that you, you can use it. If you cut it out with a saw, you can use a 3G modem. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. It must have been more expensive for them to redevelop the, the, the motherboard without the 3G modem than to... Uh, to do the, the the door, so maybe the the stylus stuff is still in there. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah. then you wouldn't need it, really, would you? It's only a silo, um, right? Pricing: um, the fully loaded model is going to be twelve hundred quid, uh, twelve hundred dollars. Um, but the base model is seven hundred dollars. So. It, it looks really nice. Though. I love the the look of the backlit keyboard and the nice big trackpad. It looks really, really nice. Yeah, I wonder how Google feels about the, the this issue that, as you as you correctly mentioned, that Chromebooks were supposed to be fully online, but people just couldn't get around that. They're they're too schooled in the way of Windows computers yeah. and Macs that they they need their storage and they need their apps to be on the device using local processing power. Mm. Um, that uh, they they're seeing these i7 devices coming out with uh, with huge price tags against it. Yeah. I, I understand what Google were looking for there, and it would be awesome that um, websites just have the power and it is everything server side. And you you bas but it, Chromebooks have basically just turned into yeah you can have your bit of storage in the cloud. Mm -hmm. and that's about it. Mm. <laughs> Nothing else really happens in the cloud unless you're lucky enough to use one website that maybe processes graphics or something like that my mum my mum uses a chromebook exactly as google intended she never does yeah. anything with it except sits on the sofa and surfs websites shops on amazon looks at email that's it and, that, and that's what i think google's vision of it was not to be make it a kind of business device i think all this kind of trying to expand things and change it and move it up and and do other stuff has come along since the original vision of chromebooks hasn't it it has yes but <laughs> and the, the, the problems do suddenly present themselves like my my wife will say oh i've just been emailed an invoice I want to look at that in my Chromebook. I've got it in my phone. So if I download that, <laughs> and then you have to enter into that whole, this is what you have to do to be able to see that on your Chromebook. Yeah. That is a discussion I never, ever want to have to have again. No. And my mum does that. She says, oh, that's on my that's on my Chromebook. And I say, no, it's not on anything. It's in <laughs> Google's cloud in their server. It's it's wherever you, whatever device you're using is where you'll find it. Don't worry, just use whatever you want. So yeah, yeah people yeah. a lot of people don't get that really. 
No, no, it's, it's a really difficult thing to explain. And then they complain that it's complicated uh, because it's not the same way as it was whenever they used Windows 3.1. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, and she says that as well. She said, it was so much easier when it was files and folders and I knew where things were. And um, with this Google thing, with Google Drive, the, I said they're not really folders, they're, they're labels, you know? All your stuff is in one big pot and it's labelled. Each folder and file, each <laughs> each file is labelled and they call them labels. No, she can't get her head around with that. She wants it to be, she wants a tree of folders, uh, which is good for her really. She's in her mid 80s and she's still, you know, thinking that way with computing. So good for her, but even so, she does get lost with it. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> All right, moving into Hark Back and also into the third R of this podcast. Uh, Ian, there you go. We're making up for it. Well, first, second, and now the oh, third. Oh, yeah. Ian Barson will be very pleased. Yes. Well, I suppose it would be the second R if you can count the zero R. No, no, I think this is the third hour. Yeah, first 60 minutes, second 60 minutes. Now we're uh, we'll be in the fourth minutes. if you carry on talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm kind of... Ad living, I'm afraid. Um, I wanted to have a quick chat about something that popped up because I, I, I watched a video on YouTube quite recently and it got me thinking about uh, running abandonware on my Chromebook. Um, you know, playing old old games. Uh, one place you can go to do that is, uh, is uh, abandonware websites. Yeah. And whenever I was going through that, I found a game called Snow Strike. Some people may know that. You can actually buy it through Steam, I've, I discovered. Um, but this was a game that I played on my old Amstrad PC 1640 way back in the day. And I booted it up, and it played through the speakers the old PC speaker music. And it was fantastic. <laughs> it was really good. For, for PC speaker music, I was thinking, wow, this, this really is very, very good. The, uh, after that, they, they really took steps to make uh, PC music sound so much better. And when I started building computers, my very first computer I built when I was about 17 years old, I remember one of the crucial factors that I had to, bring, uh, I had to work with. Uh, before video cards, you had a sound card. You had to go out and buy a sound card. Uh, and you, if you spent more money, you could get a better sound card. And over the years, uh, which actually... Now I look at it from uh, from twenty odd years later. Uh, <laughs> sound cards um, changed drastically in a very short period of time, but to me at the time, um, the likes of moving from AdLib to Gravis Ultrasound uh, felt like it was almost about ten years of innovation, when in fact it was only two or three years of innovation. Um, I had a number of different sound cards. I'm not going to try and bluff and say I know much about them, but I do remember how things would sound. And Wolfenstein 3D is one game that I have used on various different computers over the years, and I know how, how much better it has sounded uh, on, on later hardware. Sound cards are something that we take for granted now because it's all built into the, the motherboard and it's, it's generally HD audio and it all sounds exactly the same. If you plug in your headphones or plug in speakers, it'll pretty much sound as, as good across the devices. Yet back in the, in the early 90s, uh, you could buy an AdLib card or a Roland card or a Sound Canvas, wasn't it? I think it was the other one. Uh, and you would get various different bl blops coming out of it, and games would sound incredibly different. There's a fella on, on YouTube who has who's collected together, I think, eight or nine different sound cards, and he has played the Doom music through all of these different sound cards, and it's amazing how different sound cards could sound in the space of you know two or three years of, uh, of reproduction. Obviously... Uh, these are, are sound cards that cost different amounts of money. Uh, so you you can have like a really cheapy basic ad lib card, uh, which has like the Yamaha sound chip on there, and then you could have something like Gravis Ultrasound or something, which has a, a much more expensive uh, audio card uh, that would sound so much better and sound what you expect Doom's theme tune to sound like today. Uh, I I I can't. I wish I could remember all of the sound cards I've had. I remember having a Roland at one stage. I remember buying 
for big money the Sound Blaster Odigy 2. And that card arrived, and, and from what I remember, it was gold. Um, all the, 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 the transistors and capacitors on it were of a gold colour. That might just be my memory of it, and it was actually all PCB, and maybe the, the back plate was gold or something like that. But I remember it being all gold, and taking it out and holding it up going, Wow, it's arrived! And putting it into my self-built PC, and, uh, and, and having great music. Uh, loading the drivers in and having to get the driver CD and get that in there. Even back in the day when you had these ad-libs, you had to go into your autoexec.bat and your, your config.sys and put your drivers in there and hope that you had enough memory left over to be able to play the game that you bought the sound card in the first place. Ted, did you ever have these perils and pitfalls of buying sound cards? <laughs> this is going to be the, the most geeky, nerdy hark back we've ever, <laughs> we've ever had, I think. Um, because, no, the answer, the short answer is no, I didn't. And I had no idea about this. When we used to buy computers back in the day, we tended to not open them up very much and mess about with things like sound cards. I think I, I probably knew they were in there and I knew what they did and I, I knew that you could change them, but I wouldn't have, have had no idea idea that that would then change the the, the 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 music that was associated with a game for example um mm -hmm. no no idea at all um but yeah the, i mean I, i've got a big computer sat here which i mentioned earlier and and presumably um if you wanted to you could expand that in for sound in all sorts of different ways now but back in these days it was probably more um as you say when it was separated it was if it, you know if you didn't have it in there you wouldn't get any sound yeah, yeah. and and uh, <laughs> but but buying a different one would be just beyond my pay grade i think well yeah uh, my my brother had this this big lnx that he got uh, whenever i think he did his gcse's or his a levels or something like that or sorry it's o levels they were at the time i did gcse's he did o levels <laughs> um and uh, he did well, so he got this this big LNX bot for him. I think it was a four eight six SX twenty five megahertz thing. That was it was crazy how good it was, and all the games that you tried to run. Not that he ever played games, but I did. Uh, ran really smoothly, but he had a piece of audio software, and I can't remember what it was. And we used, I, I used to use his uh, his modem and go and download MIDI files, and you'd be able to listen to music <laughs> MIDI files from a BBS. Right. Um, and they they would be MIDI reproductions of perhaps maybe theme tunes. You know, you could listen to the Star Wars theme tune in MIDI version, which was really nice. It was cool to listen to. But I remember he got this this I. I I would like to say it was an MP3, but it probably wasn't at the time. But it was a thing called Get the Goblin. <laughs> and it was the most amazing piece of sound I had heard a computer do. And it had uh, it had digitized speech and laughter and things like that. And it was like a, a cartoony style music piece. And listening back to it, I, I have vague memories of it. I should go off and, and see if I can find it. Um, but it... it it, was, it just blew me away at how amazing this sounded. Whereas I had my Amstrad PC-1640 with a PC speaker sitting up there that, that did blip and blop. And uh, the most amazing piece of sound I had was that Snow Strike theme tune. Uh, and it just it pushed me to try and get a better ad-lib card. And I went out and bought one and put it into my Amstrad and it didn't work. And then my dad got me this other PC. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a PS2 or something like that. But I put it into that. And it did work. And it was a 286 machine. And it wouldn't run games as well as his big computer. But, and things just didn't sound as well with this cheap, crappy card that I bought. Um, second hand from a, a <laughs> some sort of computer uh, bazaar or something that I, that I went to in Belfast. <laughs> Uh, and I bought a mouse as well, a three-button mouse. I remember thinking, wow, there's three buttons there. I can't wait to find out what the middle <laughs> button does. Didn't do anything. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that, it blip-blopped at me, and it was it sounded marginally better than the PC speaker, but nowhere near as good as what he had down in his bedroom. And, uh, yeah, um, it was a whole sort of learning, try and test and see what you can do uh, level to sound. 
until such time as motherboards came with high definition audio built into yeah. them and you never had to worry about sound again yeah. uh, and you had proper you just speakers. plug in your speakers yeah. where you go proper yeah. proper speakers plug them in and um it, it, i do remember the transformation between um these you know really really basic clunky sounds and then suddenly being able to use speakers definitely remember that yeah yeah Ah well, it was it was easier times, I suppose, uh, for for picking up hardware and matching things and getting them to work. But uh, it was it was hard for someone who, like myself who was learning at the time. So can you not buy sound cards now? Could, could, I don't think so. You, no, you, could, you, uh, you couldn't open up and put one in a slot and see what happened. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I don't think they would be compatible. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, moving into the bargain basement where things are cheap and cheerful pr- should hopefully work actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, the first thing is uh Western Digital are doing a bit of a sale on hard disks, which is one of the things I was talking to you before yeah. the show about. Uh you can pick up uh they they have a a bunch of recertified hard drives, although I have noticed between yesterday and today a certain percentage of them have disappeared and you can't get certain variations of my books recertified anymore but i did find the my book three terabyte 50 pound option uh for the the good looking uh desktop hard drive uh which i think is quite good it's reduced in price from 90 pounds down to 50 pounds uh for three terabytes that's not too bad you could plug that into the back of a an android tv or a playstation or something like that and have a a decent amount of extra storage that's a, uh, for 50 quid. That's a desktop, is it? How, how, how it is, physically yeah. big is it? There's no indication of size there. Um, hang on a second. I have one beside oh. me. Uh, it's that's about f- f- six inches tall. Oh, it's quite dinky then. Right, okay. One and a half inches wide. Oh, look, there's a data sheet below. Should have looked at that. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realise it was so small. It looks, It looks bigger than that from the picture, yeah. Yeah, they are quite nice, oh. and they're 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 glossy plastic. They do these two different my books. There's one with like a smooth plastic around the outside, and then there's this one with the ripple effect right. uh, down the bottom. And I, I I don't actually know what the difference is between the two. I thought this new ripple effect was the successor to the smooth effect my book, but it's not. They they still sell both of them, and the the prices are slightly different from one to the other i've never delved that deep into them to see if there's different architecture inside them that's pretty good isn't it 50 quid for three terabytes yeah but if if you look hard enough you can find in their recertified shop which are the ones that i prefer uh you can get a uh, five gigabyte one or five terabyte ones for 50 quid as well right. where they have been returned to western digital oh they yeah. have tested them yeah. uh fixed them tested them and then they're sending sending them back out to people uh, for around about that price, but because someone's had them before and they failed, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Are technically second hand. You were saying last week that they uh, it's a preferred way to buy them, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what have you got? Very good. Um, I've got a six pound seventy nine USB C to HDMI adapter, and the reason I chucked this in is because it's thirty thirty eight percent off today, um, and it's a really cheap little thing, but. When I, I remember when I wanted to do HDMI out from my phone to my telly, uh, my uh, my uh, monitor, I, I the, the Samsung one that I was looking at was like thirty something quid, and I ended up buying one for about twenty quid I think. But they were really expensive, and now they've either plummeted in price these days, or um, you know they're just much well they they are much cheaper than they used to be perhaps. But probably the Samsung one is still the same thirty five quid or whatever it was. Anyway. Mm. Um, this one, six pounds seventy nine, cheapest chips, and you can attach your phone to your telly like I did. Excellent. Um, it, it's six pounds seventy nine for one, or you can buy a two pack for eighteen pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if anyone has fallen for that. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, keeping on the storage side of things, and this is one thing that I do actually fancy for my uh, NVIDIA Shield TV, is that little crucial portable SSD. This is a two terabyte version, 
and it's 157 pounds. The one terabyte version is 91 pounds and 29p, but uh, I, I really like the look of these. Um, and it does up to 1050 megabytes per second. It's USB 3.2, it's got USB C on there as well. Um, so you should be able to hook this up to, well, my main idea is hooking it up to the Android Shield TV and having extended storage because I have a, a USB uh, flash drive, uh, 512 gigabyte uh, plugged into the back of it and it keeps unmounting it because it says it's too slow. Uh, but I've heard reports that both this and the Samsung T7 portable uh, are, are are good compatible products for that. And uh, this is, uh, I, I think it's about £50 pounds cheaper than the Samsung variant. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I do want one of these. Very good. £157 pounds down from £247. Pounds. Yes, Good indeed. Seating. Two terabytes. Marvellous. That's what we like. Marvellous. Now, the Samsung Galaxy Smart Tag, which is not as smart as the modern, more modern ones, I have to admit, and with which you need to install the Smart Things Samsung app, and some features don't work with non-Samsung phones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a lot of caveats here. A half price. <laughs> Um, uh, and just to make it clear, they're not smart in the same way as the Apple ones are, which, you know, tag on to other people's phones to track things going through <laughs> airports them. and all the rest of it. These these are quite basic. You know, th these are the ones that you use for, like, your lost keys or your, your you know, um, you, you, you attach it to your um, your wallet or whatever or, or a, whatever you want, really. But but within Bluetooth, Bluetooth range... Um, which apparently, according to this, is 120 metres. Uh, Bluetooth's not 120 metres. Don't know how they get no. to that one. Anyway, 50% um, off, 15 quid each. Lovely job, Luke. Nice bargain. Absolutely, yeah. So half price for half the features. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go get an Apple one. Yeah. Um, uh, Samsung are also selling the uh, the Watch 4, the classic smartwatch, uh, with its rotating bezel. Uh, and it's dropped down in price from £369 to £351. I remember that being cheaper yesterday. Uh, it was £320 yesterday. Uh, but now it's £351. They must be coming uh, And £70 a month for five months for me. So uh, £31 for 12 months. Oh, have you got 12 months on that? Ah, uh, but that's the, I think, Barclays Oh, or yeah, that's the like Barclays that. thing, yeah. That does look nice, though. That, I do like the Samsung, the look of the Samsung watches. Well, if you're going out and treating yourself to an S22, uh, you may as well get a, a smartwatch to complement it. It has been cheaper in the past. It's it's dropped down to around about 300 and, no, 289 pounds in the past. But uh, I think this is one of the cheapest you can get today. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, we'll come to another watch in a minute, um, which is, in fact, we'll come to it now, which is the Skagen Falster 2. Now, th this really does look attractive to me. Now, this the, the reason this is cheap, and it, it is cheap, it's it's 300 quid of watch with um, a, an extra 50% off, or 46% off, and an extra 15% voucher. So this watch you can get for £127.50, 300 quid's worth of watch, or, for me, 5 times 25 quid. Um, but it's the, the stuff it's got on board with it, even though the Falster 3 is now out, which is better specified, um, it's still pretty decent. It's got Wear OS 2.1, NFC with Google Pay, GPS, biometrics. Uh, it, I think that it's an absolute bargain. I, I know that the, watch, the Samsung Watch 4 is bang up to date and it'll be... Um, better but and, and i have i've got a skagen watch i don't wear it anymore because i don't wear watches but um the skagen watch i had which was not a smart watch it was an ordinary watch was just beautiful it was really nicely made and it's so nice design and i really quite fancy the look of that if i was going to buy one a smart watch that for a, a very good price would be in my shortlist yeah i've never heard of this before skagen they're a um, Scandinavian company. They're, they do really stylish... Well, just search on Skagen watches and you'll see lots of interesting stylish, stylish watches. Yeah, this looks cracker. Mm. Yeah, it's really sexy. Mm -hmm. Swim-proof notifications, personalise your diet, 
actual your music. Mm -hmm. oh, very nice, very nice. 150 pounds. Well, 100, well, 127. There's a 15 pound voucher on it. So you, I'm not seeing. That. Oh, aren't you? Oh no, that oh that's 15 pound now. That I th I thought that said 15 percent yesterday. They keep changing the book, the flipping goalposts, don't they? <laughs> they do. Yeah. yeah. It's con it's it's difficult. Yeah. Um, I have something a wee bit different. Um, this week for that i don't know what i've just done there but i've 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 changed something sorry um <laughs> don't mind us just show notes problems uh low pro uh this is a camera bag and it looks pretty darn good and it's reduced in price from 56 pounds 95p down to 42 pounds this is the catchily titled lp 368892 pww <laughs> this is the 150 backpack I, i've um, had one of these you know yeah, I'm sure I had one of these when I was into photography in a big way, and I used to carry around all my SLR equipment. Well, it, it was something very, very similar if it wasn't this. But um, yeah, it was really. I remember it being really, really good. Oh, I, 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 I do like these. Um, they're not just camera bags as well. You can use them for yeah, other yeah. things. Holding your lunch because they're <laughs> climatized too, so it'll keep things warm or keep things cold as necessary. Uh, and they're usually pretty watertight and water resistant in, in some way. Uh, this is the 150 backpack for camera and it can, you can store your DSLR or a pack of sandwiches um, with a lens and maybe some Branson pickle. Uh, CSC mirrorless and it also takes a 10 inch tablet, uh, cutlery, uh, serviettes, um, toy. A pickle, uh, yes, banana, apple, packet of crisps and it's available in black. I love these. I really do. I've got a, a huge collection of looking at them now oh, right. of camera bags um, for every type of occasion. Um, no matter where I go, I can take my lunch. And uh, even though I don't have cameras to put in them, uh, they still make a very sensible bag for folks. I think I, I'm, I'm sure I had this. It looks so familiar. The Amazon listing has a, a customer who's taken a bunch of better pictures of it. Uh, out and about and it, it doesn't seem very big uh, but it seems to really hold lots of stuff uh, and I, I really do fancy one of these yeah. as a sort of a mid-range between my my small mid-range camera bag and my larger mid-range camera bag mm -hmm. sort of a, a mid-range mid-range camera bag uh, with with place for uh, for I don't know some yacht ah we've something. broken our record Two hours twenty-four <laughs> is gone, <laughs> broken, destroyed. Well, uh, that that should please people more so than annoy people. <laughs> right, last one is the Sennheiser Momentum Three, which are on special offer, a hundred pound off on Amazon, or for me, fifty quid a month for five months. And they are a very, very well-reviewed pair of headphones. I was reading about them on um, What Hi-Fi this week, and they look as though they're really stonking. All the usual things, noise cancelling, Alexa built-in, blah, 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 and um, smart controls, blah, 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 via the app. Look really nice. 250 quid instead of 350, and that looks like a bit of a bargain. And it is... Oh, blimey. Oh, dear. What's wrong? Last week it was 199 quid. How's that a bargain? Take this out. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the real bargain was last week. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, I do. It, it's, it's still cheaper than what you would get out of uh, a regular... I, I think I saw these on sale in Richard Signs, actually, uh, last week as well. Right. Um, yeah, they're, they're good. They look, yeah, they look lovely, also. don't they? They, the, yeah. I, I like the way that the buttons have been arranged around the side and the way that the the arms sweep around the back of the, yeah yeah I, I like the design of those are you getting this rain too I think it can yeah, be in yeah. the background there it's really um, pissing it down here <laughs> yeah it's hammering down here too but it's not quite as vocal <laughs> vocal uh, it's not quite as loud that's because you live yeah. in a brick building <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so the Sennheiser Momentum 3s, they look really nice. Absolutely. 
good call, good call. All right, well, uh, we'll, we'll let you go about your lives now. Um, <laughs> we'll stop gibbering in your ear. If you want to get in touch with us and complain about anything we've talked about this week, uh, you can by emailing me at gareth at techaddicts.uk. You can also find us on Twitter as well, at techaddictsuk. I am on Twitter too, at Gareth Miles, G-A-R-E-T-H-M-Y-L-E-S, and I have my dot com that has had a facelift. And um, Ted, where can they find I'll you? Let's go and have a look. Can you hear the winds coming in now? Can you hear it? It's close the window. Blank, blank, banging on the side of this van. I, the, the the weather's great. TedSalmon.com is for me. Usually, um, that, that's that's the usual place for me. TedSalmon.com links to all the audio podcasts, all the MeWe groups. Head across there, and you won't get lost. If you want to buy me a coffee, that's very welcome. Thank you very much. And it's PayPal.me forward slash TedSalmon. Right. Um, hopefully, we will hear from you next week, Ted, and you won't get blown away because it, it does sound quite quite bad where you are. Um, yeah, stay the, safe. The, the wind has picked up, and it raining at the same time always seems to make it worse, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's got a funny feeling I might get cut off as well in a minute. All right. Well, uh, stay in touch, and and we'll speak to you all next week. Take care now. Bye.